Week number seven of high school football here in Columbus under a very warm October night. But it's going to get warmer on the field because we have a huge rivalry for you in the City League North Division. Brookhaven and Beechcroft, they've been playing each other for many years. Many playoff dreams have been spoiled by the other. Throw the record book out the window. This promises to be a dandy. And uh, along with the quarterback, Matt DeRazio, I'm Eric Thacker. Glad to have you with us once again. And uh, Matt, this is a very special ball game for both teams. Yeah, absolutely. Not only the City League North, but as you mentioned, the playoffs are very important right now for either of these teams. Let's take a look at some of the stars to watch. They share one thing. They both have the same last name. <laughs> yeah, for Brookhaven, Rodney Stewart running back. Uh, he can run all over the field. He has just under 1,200 yards uh, rushing and 19 touchdowns, and he gets from A to B as fast as anybody in Central Ohio. Now let's take a look at the other Stewart on the other side of the ball. We got Marvin Stewart, a four-year starter, uh, a guy who has over 900 yards total offense and nine touchdowns. But this is a guy who has not beaten Brookhaven yet. And if he wants to do it, this is his last chance being a senior. Now you take a look at the city standings, and you see the picture there. That's what's important. Both teams undefeated in league play, and in order to get to the playoffs, each team is going to have to run the table from here on out. So stay tuned. This is promising to be a dandy. There's athletes all over the field, big hitting and very good speed on the track as well. As we said, it's a little bit of a warm night, and we expect conditioning to play a factor as we get late in the second half. So we'll have the kickoff here of the City League North game right after this here on CSN. Once again, glad to have you with us, everybody. Big, huge game, Beechcroft, Brookhaven. And uh, I tell you what, Matt, it, it, you know, for both teams, this is, this is the most important game now. Yeah, every year uh, it seems like the City League North uh, division title comes down to this game, and tonight's no different. Both 3-0. Go in division play, and so whoever wins tonight is going to have a leg up on the North Division. And now let us bring in CSN's own Katie Witham. Katie, happy birthday, dear. Oh, thank you very much. You know, the field conditions are looking pretty good right now. 81 degrees, guys, in October. I mean, you can't ask for better weather than this right now. Wind not going to be too big of a factor for the guys tonight. Seven mile an hour winds heading south. There is some humidity, 56% right now, and a possible chance of rain. But honestly, not a cloud in the sky right now. The field looking great as well. A couple areas of a little wear and tear, but overall, things down here are looking great. Eric? All right, and Katie, glad to have you with us. We look forward to your reports uh, throughout the ball game. Now, Beechcroft has won the toss, has elected to defer. So Brookhaven will scrimmage first. And back deep is Rodney Stewart and um, Adrian Ferris will be the return specialist for Brookhaven. And this first quarter is brought to you by the National Scouting Report and my good friend Terry Mallory. So Beechcroft, Marvin Stewart going to kick off here. Our officials tonight, our referee is Matt Brown, our umpire Ross Brown, uh, Pete Hampton is the linesman, Fenton Moore is our line judge, and uh, we thank them. So, yeah, uh, wasn't much wind, but it still fell off the tee. <laughs> So Beechcroft lining up to get this football game underway. Both teams 3-0 in league play. And uh, Coach Tom Dunlap, he needs this one. And electing to put his defense on the field first. Again, Marvin Stewart, you're going to hear his name a lot. He is the quarterback for the Cougars. And he approaches the football. And it's going to be a squid kick. And it's going to be kicked out of bounds. So Brookhaven may elect to take the football at the 35. The coaches have a decision here. Take the ball or make them re-kick. And we can hear just above the, a couple of the Brookhaven coaches. They might want to re-kick. So it is a procedure penalty. 
And they will make him re-kick. Why not? Last week, Rodney Stewart had a big kickoff return, but was a victim of the turf monster inside the 10. He almost took that one back. So he is a definite threat to um, run it back the length of the field. So they want to put it in his hands. Coach Tom Dunlap, oh, 22 years here, 24 years, a head coach, outstanding record overall, 162 and 67, and at Beechcroft, 158 and 65. You will not find a finer coach in the city of Columbus, and he probably has the longest tenure. In fact, he does have the longest tenure of any active head coach in the city schools. So you move Marvin Stewart back five yards. And it's another squib. They're not going to flirt with Rodney Stewart, and they have to pounce on it, so they will scrimmage at the 35, just a little bit over, so they gain a length of a football, man. <laughs> all, all that for a length, a length of a football, Eric. Coach Tom Blake in his fifth year. And look at that outstanding record. Won the 2004 state championship as a Division II school. And, folks, he was the first and the first city league team from either Cincinnati, Cleveland, or Columbus to, to achieve that. The first city school in all of the three big cities in Ohio to win a state title. First down and 10. Braswell, Aquani Braswell, Braswell, the signal caller, no doubt. You're going to turn, hand it off to Rodney Stewart, big hole as number five gets across the midfield strike and quickly into Cougar territory. Well, Eric, we've been hearing all about this guy. He's he's got 19 touchdowns, as we mentioned uh, on the year, and you can see why. He gets the first handoff and he just explodes. Let's take a look at the uh, Bearcats back in receivers. And uh, you saw number five there, but they can throw it as well. Johnson and Ferris pretty good receiving the football. Here he comes again, and he bangs ahead for about six yards. Now let's take a look at that offensive line. Folks, not very tall, but big people. The biggest, Donald Prentice at 290, and it's an all upperclassman offensive line. Second down, and let's call it five. 19 touchdowns for that young man there. Just under 1,200 yards coming into week number seven. Averages 11 and a half yards per carry, and he is just electric. A lot of people looking at him. Now they throw out a couple of wings. As Braswell will toss, as Stewart tries to turn the corner and does, and he'll rip off about 12 or 13 yards inside of the 30, down to the 29. Well, Eric, this guy is the second leading rusher in, uh, in Central Ohio, and you can see why. Now let's take a look at the uh, Cougar defense that's already been tested. They run a 4-3, King, Williams, Spivey, and Nelson. Hale, Collins, and Harper are the linebacks. They're gonna have to step up big tonight. And uh, Mathurin, Cordell, Holman, and Hill is the defensive backfield. Second down, or first down, rather. And 10. They have the yard marker saying second down. It is a first down. Now you run the draw. And there's a lot of running room there in the middle and breaking a couple of tackles and they're picking up another uh, about 10 or 12 yards. And this is another running back that has come in. And that is uh, Demetrius Johnson, the 5'10", 215 pounder who ripped off 12 or 13 there. I'll tell you what, he looked just like, uh, he just looked just like Stewart. So there's two of them that look very similar. The third first down. Single wide out. Now coming here to the near side in motion. They said they would run some motion. And here comes Stewart trying to cut back and this time he's upended at the line of scrimmage a host of yellow jerseys there including uh, number 44 that's Wallace Hale who plays both ways a fullback and a linebacker for Beechcroft. Yeah just a basic toss sweep right here but as you mentioned Wallace Hale was there uh, ready to make this stop and then this this Cougar defense certainly has to make a stand here because uh, Stewart has had his way so far in this in this first drive and they got to slow him down somehow. Braswell will work under center with an empty backfield. Couple of tight ends, three wide outs, five step drop, pup fakes, and that slant pass incomplete. Well defended as uh, number 21, Larez Harper, the sophomore, was there defending for the Cougars. 
Now let's bring in the very classy Matt Waddell. What do you have for us, buddy? Well, Eric, great to be down here on the sidelines with you and quite a bit of intensity in the crowd behind me here at Beechcroft. And when both teams took the field, certainly to start the game in midfield, uh, a lot of talking to each other. And it's certainly important on this first drive, guys, for uh, Beechcroft to stay in this early. They're 0-2 at home so far this year, undefeated on the road. So not a stat you usually see after six right. games. We'll see what they can do tonight, guys. All righty. We look forward to your reports, uh, Matt, as well. Big third down here. Third down and nine. The line to make is just inside the 10. And hit at the line of scrimmage. And he's not going to get the first down. So decision time for Tom Blake. This is a team It's um, you know, they have a decent kicker in Ibrahim Marah. What, is there a penalty down there? Uh, I see the referees discussing things. In fact, I think we do. That's an illegal shift on the offense. Naturally, they'll decline that, and Tom Blake has a decision. Going back to what I was saying, Ibrahim Marah is 0 for 2 in the field goal department. In fact, it was those uh, blocked field goals against Davidson, the only loss for Brookhaven this year. So now they're going to try to attempt one. This is going to be a 34-yard effort in between the hashes. Good pass, good hold. This kick may be his first win underway, and it's good. So Brookhaven gets a couple of first downs, but then Beechcroft's defense uh, stiffens up a little bit. And Brookhaven forced uh, to kick the field goal, but they do convert the first field goal of the year. So our score three to nothing here on CSN's Game of the Week, CSN, which is local sports now. Welcome back, everybody. Ibrahim Marah able to get the field goal, his first one of the year. And Brookhaven on top three to nothing. And Beechcroft ready to receive this kickoff. And then they'll put their offense on the field. Ibrahim Marah, an excellent uh, soccer player. In fact, uh, Tom Blake said we had to go to the soccer team. And he said we found one. And he is a midfielder for the Bearcats of Brookhaven. So now they said he can kick to the 10 and inside of the 10 sometimes. So he's about ready to get this football a wallop. And here we go. Nice high kick. And uh, Coach Blake was right, right at the eight yard line. That kickoff return, Cardell and Simpson back there. And let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Cougars. The backs and receivers, Kroom, Walton, Nelson, Mathurin is the running back, and Hale. The offensive line totally replaced. This is a brand new offensive line this year. Matthews, White, Hilson, Havner, and Howell. First down and 10. Beechcroft and Stewart, three year starter. Look at the numbers there, pretty impressive. We'll work underneath center. And he'll test that inside and then slipping down at the uh, 31, Darren Cordell. Cordell's very good. In fact, they'll run this football via committee, but uh, he is uh, averaging 6.3 per carry. Uh, and take a look at the uh, Bearcats defense, and they run a four down lineman. As you take a look at him there, the linebackers, again, these, both these teams will run the ball, but they will go vertical, so the defensive backfield's there. Gannell, Brookins, Edwards, and Miller will also play a key in tonight's ball game. A gain of seven on the play, second down, and now you run a little trap here near side, but wrapped up uh, the big arms of number 57 for uh, Brookhaven, and that is uh, Galvin Bonner, a 5'9", 200-pounder, and he is a junior. Well, Eric, you look at that first drive by the Bearcats, and they got three points. You got to be excited about it. But on, on the other side, the Cougars stopped them for three, where it looked like they certainly were going to give up seven. Now it's a chance for their offense and their leader of this team, Marvin Stewart, to come out and see what he can do as a senior and see if he can uh, put together some some nice drives and some points for uh, for the Cougars. And a first down. 
Dolphins. Their first quarter, seeing Brookhaven take the opening kickoff, got a couple of first downs, in fact, three of them, and then Beechcroft got stingy defensively, held them on third down and long, and then uh, forced them to uh, kick a field goal, um, which Ibrahim uh, uh, Marah connected from about 38 yards. So now it is uh, Brookhaven getting their first, first down. Opening drive for them, eight minutes and three seconds, clock running. Stewart out of the gun, and he's going to be brought down. Oh, my, 56, Christopher Thigpen, the junior at 6 feet, 204 back there, and wrapped him up nowhere to go. Yeah, and, you know, before the play, you look at uh, you look at all the Bearcats up on the line. There was there was eight guys up in the line. That's how Tom Blake likes to do it. He likes to have guys up around the ball, especially when you have a quarterback, a double threat in uh, Marvin Stewart. You got to stop him so you can't give him a chance to, to get any kind of momentum running that football. In fact, let's give kudos to Andrew Harrell, the uh, linebacker. The junior was the first one to disrupt that play and it's a loss. So now it's second down and 11 scrimmaging from the 35. Stewart, swing it out near side, complete Billy Croom, and then he's eaten up. And that's a completion for a loss. Oh, my. Who came in there? Was that Julius Miller? Yeah, it was Julius Miller coming in from that corner spot. He was all over it. Read it right away, little stop route, and he didn't back up at all. He took his three steps, read the quarterback, and came up and made a nice tackle. And one thing about that tackle is he grabbed on some cloth and made sure the, the ball carrier got down. Uh, Julius Miller with one interception this year and a big stop there. Third down and let's call it 13. The line to make will be just over the 44 yard line. Stewart with Cordell in motion. Blitz coming. He eludes it and he may have a first down if he picks up a block and he does. What a run there by Marvin Stewart who can run the ball effectively averages 7.1 yards per carry. Wow, what a play. There you hear it. That's what a senior that's what a senior does. He's played a lot of football games. He's 28 and 8 as a starter and uh, you expect him to make a play like that. He, the, the pocket looks like it's going to collapse around him. All he does is steps up, makes a nice play with his legs. We mentioned a dual threat over 900 yards total offense. He's got 225 rushing and 600 uh, 75 passing right here. He shows the rushing side of it. And this is a big kid now. This isn't a guy that's you know a lightweight. This is 6'1, 210 coming at you. <laughs> no doubt. And now you run a little trap this side and uh, hit for a minimal gain. Don't miss high school gridiron action Friday, October the 12th. Catch high school game night with Martha Shark and Jeff Logan, presented by WTDA and CSN at 9. Then stay tuned at 10 p.m. for CSN's doubleheader featuring the Patriots of Olentangy Liberty and the Golden Eagles of Big Walnut and the Bulldogs of Bloom Carroll hosting the Indians of Canal Winchester. It's all on Columbus Sports Network, which is local sports now. Pump fake looking to throw, swing it back here near side. That's Ron Walton for Beechcroft, and Walton cuts it up inside and is dropped at the 45-yard line by Cameron Gunnell, the 5'10", 160-pound senior. And it'll bring up possession down, third down, and five. The yeah. line to make will be the fourth. Sorry, Eric. Yeah, Ron Walton, he's a big kid, 6'3", just under 200 pounds. He's got 14 catches on the year, 167 yards, but he's also got three touchdowns. And this is a guy... That, if he gets in that open field or you get down in the red zone, he could be a guy you want to throw it up to. And they may be looking for him here. Stewart out of the gun. Four receivers. Middle pass complete. And this time they find Cordell out of the backfield, didn't they? Yep. And he picks up about 10 plus yards. So the senior receiving came in tonight with the nine receptions for 75 yards and picks up a good one there. Matt Waddell, what do you have for us, buddy? Well, well, guys, this is the best defense right here for Beechcroft, keeping their offense on the field and keeping Stewart off from Brookhaven on that side of things. Real important that they can hold them to three, come out, get a big, long, sustained drive, and boy, third down conversions, couple of long one guys right off the bat, and they're keeping the field out there. Well, you are exactly right with that. The best defense sometimes is an offense that can uh, convert first downs and get you a eight play plus drive. Stewart out of the gun, pump fakes. He's going to go big time. One-on-one -on -one coverage. 
catch incomplete as he was looking for Billy Croom, and Croom was working on Julius Miller. But what a fine job Miller has done. A couple of plays in this ball game, he was with him step for step down the field. Yeah, Miller's a corner that you don't want to throw on too often. But I'll tell you what, going back to the play before, Marvin Stewart has impressed on this drive. He's showing with his legs, and that for that last third down he picked up, he threw a BB right here. He takes a little a little drop, pump fakes. Sends it to uh, to his receiver up the sideline, just overshoots him. But I'll tell you what, this kid can throw the ball. He's got a nice arm on him. Doesn't miss by much there either. And he put it at the only place that somebody could get it, and it was his guy. That's right. Over that shoulder. So here's Cordell, breaks a tackle, and he's close to first down yardage, down to the 25. But Cordell's got a couple carries, and as you mentioned, Eric, he's averaging 6.3 yards a carry. And tell you what this offensive line's opening up a couple holes for him and he's sneaking right through and uh, and running hard this is an offensive line talking about white spivey mitchell hilson and how this is a brand new offensive line no returning starters from a year ago and that time they took the defensive line of brookhaven and just moved them and they did get the first down now you go with the eye run a little option no that was a belly give and uh, they stop it for only minimal gain. So they will hit you with the uh, with the fullback Wallace Hale. The quarterback uh, Stewart will also pull it, and uh, you'll see uh, Mathurin, Shane Mathurin, in there as well, running the ball. It's Coach Tom Blake. Oh, what a job he's done in that uh, 2004 state championship team. Ooh, how special was that? In fact, I uh, mentioned to a lot of people and was quoted as saying, I thought it was the best team uh, in the state. I thought they were better than Cincinnati Colerain, who won Division I state championship. Second down and nine. Cutting back, Cordell, and then he's going to be gang tackled. And uh, one of the Brookhaven guys there was number 57. That's Galvin Bonner, the junior, at 5'9, 200. And also uh, number 57 or uh, number 59, I thought. Nope, that was Bonner. There as he wrapped him up and then got help from Wes Edwards, the senior as well. So another uh, third down. And this time we're going to have a timeout on the field. And it's going to be an official's timeout for a water break. I'll tell you what, Eric, uh, one thing I like about Tom Dunlap in his play calling right now is he's mixed it up. He's had Stewart had make a couple passes here. We got some screens. We got Hale running the ball. We got Cordell running the ball. And when you when you keep people, uh, the defense off balance and you hit hit him with a, a number of people, that makes it uh, very tough on the defense all night. Well, Coach Tom Blake, his defensive coordinator Mark Wiley, is uh, being tested now. All right, Matt Waddell, uh, we've got some hydration issues going on already. Yeah, a little bit early on, guys, and it's Wes Edwards, number two, who was in on that tackle right there on that play, and we see the training staff working on him right now. We also see one of the guys who plays a lot both ways for Beechcroft, Darian Cordell, uh, out being attended to just to my right here on the sidelines, getting his calf worked on, like you said. Uh, it's hot, it's humid, it's really going to be some time, and you don't expect it in week seven, guys, but uh, hydration still a key, and for the guys that play a lot on both sides of the ball, uh, important for these guys, and we'll see if they're able to come back. Looks like they're going to get Edwards to his feet now. Now, actually, this broadcast team, we uh, need to be thankful. <laughs> be careful what we wish for, Matt Waddell, because just in a matter of weeks, we'll probably be looking at 40s. <laughs> but we haven't yet, so it is a blessing. But, yes, it does take its toll on uh, football team. So then your conditioning uh, comes into play, and then you think, okay, whichever team is the most physical, can possibly wear down the opposition late in the second half. You also got to keep your eye on, as Matt mentioned, how many guys you got going both ways. If you got a, if you got more guys going both ways, it's going to wear you out, and that's when the third and fourth quarters become very vital. Well, the Cougars have four that go both ways, and you have about three for Brookhaven. Big third down here. The line to make is going to be the 14. Looking to throw, stepping up, firing toward the end zone, touchdown! Oh, he found it. Billy Croom 
gets the first touchdown of the ball game. And it was a strike, and he was working against Joyous Miller, the cornerback for Brookhaven, but he just outfought him. He turned around, and the football was there. Now time for the seven up extra point presented by Walmart. And they are going to attempt a PAT. They're not going to go for two. Marvin Stewart will be attempting the PAT. Again, now you have the swinging gate there. And now we're going to have a timeout on the field. And now the uh, coaching staff very upset as they burn a timeout, but let's take a look at that touchdown strike, Matt. Yeah, it was just a little waggle pass, a little boot pass, and as you mentioned, Julius Miller was going against Billy Croom all the way down the field, and Julius Miller got the first two, but right there, definitely Billy Croom got the touchdown. He did a good job catching that ball at, his highest, at the highest point. Looked like Julius Miller kind of lost the ball for a right. second, but Croom was all over it and, and pulled it in and got, but got a foot in and right on the edge line there. They converted. He will point to the downs. camera too. Oh, absolutely. There you go. He <laughs> likes CSN as well. Yeah. Everybody likes CSN. <laughs> I'm glad to bring this exciting game to you. Two games a week. Now, this is the week we're uh, having uh, your alma mater in that big battle against Bishop Watterson. So they are going to go for that uh, seven up extra point again presented by Walmart and uh, you know we've heard that coach uh, Tom Dunlap's team has been converting two point conversions on an 80 plus percent <laughs> That's awesome. efficiency but now looking for the seventh point and points will come at a premium in this one good pass that hold is true and the kick is a knuckler. So the PAT goes by the wayside and it's 6 3. Well, that may, after that result, we may be seeing a lot more two point conversions from here on out if uh, Beachcroft finds the end zone the rest of this game. Well, uh, Tom Dunlap said that uh, they actually have a higher percentage in uh, making two point conversions or converting those than they do PAT. So I think you're right. Something to look forward to <laughs> later in the ball game. Matt Waddell, what do you have? Guys, Coach Dunlap was so upset on that extra point attempt because they were a guy short on the wow. sideline. They had one guy who wasn't out there in the blocking scheme, looked like different personnel from what they would normally use in the two point conversion package versus the extra point. And he was real upset that they had to burn a timeout and then they didn't even get the extra point out of it, guys. All also, the defensive coordinator and some of the staff down here in the early part of that drive really talking with the Beechcroft defense about getting off your blocks at the line of scrimmage. When you're having to deal with a guy like Rodney Stewart, you're going to have to be able to shed that first block and get a lot of hats to the football. So we'll see what Beechcroft can do when Brookhaven takes possession here, fellas. Yeah, and that offensive line for Brookhaven, very, very big. Not real tall, but averaging around 255, 260. And for a City League school, that is impressive. Well, just another knuckler, and that goes out of bounds. And you could take it right there at the 43 or 44 if you want. Uh, you have a, it doesn't have to go to the 35. You can take it where it actually goes out of bounds. So I think they'll take this one here. I guess the question is, do they want Rodney Stewart to get a chance to, with some open field on a, on a special teams and maybe get a kick return for a touchdown? And yeah, let's get the call here. the uh, call there and they're going to take the ball right there absolutely scrimmaging at their own 43 yard line trailing six to three with 212 left first quarter they listen to you Eric they did the right thing right there I think last time they didn't, they didn't pay dividends this time they're getting the ball near midfield good field position you know, and, uh, and a well rested offense because that offense was on the, on the sidelines for a while there so now Braswell and Stewart will go back to work on first down and 10 with excellent field position at the 43. Play fakes. Looks to throw. Braswell fires and it's complete at the 42 yard line. Coming in with that good catch, Dominic Johnson, the junior, at 5'9, 157. And there's another nice throw right there. Yeah, buddy. Monte Braswell. He's got 73 attempts for 30, uh, 37 completions for 748 yards and, and 10 touchdowns, only four interceptions. And he showed a uh, nice footwork, nice arm string right there and put, just threw a strike right across the, uh, the middle there. And a good play fake. 
Well, when you have Rodney Stewart in the back in the backfield, whew, that opens up your passing game, doesn't it? Yes. And he'll get this carry. Cuts back and a few yellow jerseys there to greet him, but not before he picks up four yards. Uh, the first one to get him there was uh, Terrell Collins, the junior, number 33. Yeah, Terrell Collins and Wallace Hale were there, but you know, one thing you talk about running backs, you talk about the good ones and you know, and the great ones, and and the great ones are ones that fall forward. And it seems so right now that Rodney Stewart, every time he's running the ball, no matter what, he ends up falling forward and getting that you know that extra two and three yards. Pro set eye now. There's a hole, but then a good ankle tackle wrapping him up. And I mean, he just. He almost squirted free, but he got him. So. <laughs> yeah, he did. It looked look. like he was going to squirt free, and then Hale is in there once again. I'll tell you what, this is the fullback who got a couple carries last drive offensively, but defensively, we've called his name three or four times. This guy's all over the field coming from that linebacker position. Yeah, he just wrapped him up around the uh, shoelaces there. Third down and short, two. Ride number five, turning the corner. And he'll have a first down after he gains five or six yards. Katie with them. You have an injury update for us. Yes, I do. Wes Edwards, it, it appears that he dislocated his right shoulder. They did hear a pop when they were trying to push it back in. Right now, he, they're uh, putting a sling on him, so it's not looking good that he will be back in the game tonight, guys. Uh, that's a tough loss there. The senior. Hate to have that happen. This is one of the biggest games of their career as a senior. Definitely want to play in this one. So, the best to him. Well, the linebackers are coming, play faking, looking to throw. Braswell, all kinds of time wide open. Is Stewart touchdown? Wow. Stewart, we, we talked about how he's run the ball quite a bit. 19 touchdowns. Well, he gets his first receiving touchdown on the year. That was just the back out of the backfield. Braswell did a good job checking down, to, you know, looked at number one, number two, back out of the backfield, your, your third read, and he's wide open, the best player potentially on the field, and he's left wide open for, a, for an easy touchdown there. So now time for the 7-up extra point, brought to you by Walmart. And Mara's kick is up and good. And our new score, 10-6, to six, two Possessions, a field goal, and a touchdown, and what a heck of a catch by Stewart. And a very well drawn up play, as you mentioned, Matt. When you have an offense that can run the ball successfully, then you can do these kind of things. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing that, that all you got to give credit to that offensive line, what they did was they gave Braswell plenty of time. As I mentioned, he checked from one to two to three. Right here, just gives a little play fake. It looks over the middle at one, comes across to, to the, to the sideline to two and three, and there it is, is right in your, right in your picture is uh, Stewart making a nice catch, no one around him, just kind of trots in the end zone for his 20th touchdown of the season. Well, Beechcroft on their first possession, they marched down the length of the field and scored. Uh, we may be in for a dog fight tonight, or should I say cat fight? <laughs> Cougars and Bearcats. <laughs> I knew you had it in you, Eric. <laughs> I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me what is a bear cat. I think it's a fic fictional <laughs> uh, animal. A lot of bear cats. Cincinnati, Rock Hill, and South Carolina. Matt Waddell, maybe you can tell us a little bit later what a what a bear cat is. <laughs> well, Roz kick again inside of the ten, and across the ten, good open field tackle there by John Bays, the senior at six two. 200. Wow. Yeah, John Bays was hustling down. We you know we don't mention special teams quite a bit, but right <laughs> there, that's John Bays. That's that's an effort play. That's an effort play. Well, the Brookhaven scoring drive covered 60 yards, took six plays and one minute and 58 seconds off the clock, and that beautiful pass from Braswell to Stewart of 25 yards. That's the difference in the ball game right now. 10 to 6 our score, and we have time for one play. 7.6 seconds left in the first quarter. And the first quarter was brought to you by the National Scouting Report. Terry Mallory doing some excellent, excellent things for these young people around Central Ohio. So check them out. Give them a call. 
First down and 10. Last play, uh, and you're going to keep it. Pull it out of the belly, and Stewart's going to find the running very difficult as the defense was able to corral him and not let him turn the corner. So, after one in this rivalry game in North Columbus, our score 10 to 6, and Brooke Haven leads. High school football action here on the Columbus Sports Network. Again, I'm Eric Thacker along with Matt uh, DeRazio, Matt Waddell, and yes, CSN's own Katie Witham, the birthday gal. Quite an athlete herself, uh, was a defender for Capital Soccer Team, and as you know, has been part of the, uh, the Columbus Crew broadcast and has done an excellent job for us here on CSN. Glad to have her with us. Well, the start of the uh, second quarter of play, 10 to six our score. And now Beechcroft back on offense and now coming uh, and uh, moving from left to right. Stewart can run, although on his last uh, play that ended the first quarter, couldn't find anywhere to go. And now you have a line of scrimmage penalty, and oh boy, Stewart was upset. Because I think he had somebody streaking down on a vertical route. Or he may just be upset because it's a procedure penalty on him. Yep, and it is. So that'll cost him five. Well, penalties are always a frustrating thing, but man, you know, when it's deep in your own territory, that just makes it worse, especially when you know your offense has proven that they can move the ball. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. You don't want to move the wrong direction. And going backwards is certainly going to make it difficult on yourself. Marvin Stewart, you see him tonight, three for five for 32 yards and one touchdown. And we know this guy's a leader. You know this guy's is a man who, who's played in a lot of uh, a lot of games, and, and so we're expecting a lot out of him tonight. And so far, he's, he's played well. Yes, he has. And now he's looking at a second down and what, 19? The line to make. They need to get back over to the 20. Looks to throw, rolling. Dump it out near side. That's a hauled in catch right here on the near sideline. Oh, what a play there as uh, number seven hauling that one in is Joe Simpson, the junior at 5'10, 160. So Simpson able to get some of those uh, yards back, and uh, they'll have an opportunity on third down and 10. Well, this hit of the half is brought to you by T Max Sports. It was a good hit. But he held on to the football. It was Jarrell Brookins right there for Is the, that. Who got it? I was looking half. to see who got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Made a little, little, little wood there, huh? Yep. Ten yards to go. Line to make the 30. And working out of the gun. Motion with Walton. Stewart. All kinds of time, middle pass, intercepted. And he has all kinds of running room, and that is Brookins. And Brookins is going to take it back, dives in over the three, touchdown Brookhaven. Well, on cue, Eric, Jarrell Brookins. We just mentioned he had the hit of the half, and then he comes up with the, uh, the big play of the half right there, steps in front of the Stewart pass. Takes it to the house, kind of baited Marvin Stewart in making that throw. It made it look like his tight end was wide open, kind of was gaining gaining ground, and then once the ball was thrown, he broke up right on it, made a nice catch with his hands, accelerated right to the end zone, and made a nice athletic play with a dive into the end zone. What a play and a huge defensive touchdown. The seven up, extra point again, brought to you by Walmart. Mara has been perfect. And he is again. He's hit on a field goal and a couple of uh, PATs. So we're only six seconds into the second quarter, and Brookhaven on top, 17 to six. Again, Stewart had time. That middle pass, he jumped on it. He broke on that all the way. Yeah, it looked like he had Chaz Nelson, the, the, the tight end, right up the middle. In fact, it, even I thought he was running wide open, and Stewart probably saw the same thing. And from this view, it looks like he might be. And just took it. Yep. Bearcat steps right in front. Gets pick six and head the other way. And 
you know, when your defense is scoring points for you, that can, you know, that can change the momentum of the game. That can change the outlook of the game as fast as, as fast as anything. Gerald Brookins, that is his second interception of the year. And that second one, bigger than the first, because in this game, you get a defensive pick six. That's huge. So now Beechcroft, we've seen on their first series that they can move the football, turned it over there. But uh, see if uh, Coach uh, Tom Dunlap doesn't get those offensive guys back going again. Because they can move the ball and they can score. This is an offense that averages 30 points per game, a little over that. Yeah, no question. They proved that in the first drive. And and obviously we've talked about the senior quarterback uh, and, and Marvin Stewart quite a bit and you know this is the opportunity where he's got to see how he bounces back see how he responds from that uh, that that interception for a touchdown. He knows it's a long game. He's been in three of these before this is his fourth one and he wants to play the best he can in this game. And I think we have an official's timeout again for a hydration break. Uh, Matt, is that what's going on down there? That's exactly what we're doing, guys, with the heat. I mean, you never see it in week seven, but that's exactly what they're going to do and spoke with the officials just a little bit at the start of the game that they were going to take at least one to two breaks per quarter. We were also saying, as I was talking with Coach Dunlap before the game, that in this series, especially over the last four or five years when these two squads have gotten together, the thing that Beechcroft has not been able to do is win the turnover battle and make the big plays. And you saw a perfect example right. of it right there, guys, where they get the interception deep in the territory. Not only do they get it, they get the pick six and go the other way. So certainly one of the things that Coach Dunlap was trying to focus on goes against Beechcroft early. Matt Waddell, we're going to talk to you again about what happened in that 04 year, the year that Brookhaven won the state Division II crown. Beechcroft had a very, very good team there as well. In fact, was nine and one, and their only loss was to the eventual state champion Bearcats of Brookhaven. They didn't make it to the playoffs, did they? That's exactly right, guys. How do you go nine and one and have your only loss be to uh, a division ahead of you, a state champion in 2004? Coach Dunlap's had a 50% playoff ratio since he's been here, 11 years and, and 22 seasons, but that was a tough one to swallow in 04. No doubt. They were an excellent, excellent football team. We'll have more stories on that. And we've got some more highlights, too. Oh, he couldn't break that last tackle as he was looking to uh, bring that out and uh, do something with it. As uh, Joe Simpson, we've seen him haul well pass in that uh, on the previous possession. And then take a look at the total yards of the uh, first quarter and six. Uh, well, actually, the clock is. Uh, may be broken because it's still at 1154 second quarter and that's where we were you know on the uh, no that's right that's right that's right so here is the uh, return and I thought he was going to squirt free and then uh, that was a good tackle if, uh, Collins doesn't get him and he's off to the races so four able to jump on his back there and prevent that thing from going big. And you know Eric you mentioned quite you know in the opening that there's a lot of there's a lot of good football players out here. There's a lot of guys running around that are athletes that that when they get the ball in their hands they can break a big one and and you know, that's that's what this game's all about is big plays and who's going to have more of them. Talk about their coach Tom Dunlap. Listen to some of the coaches that are coaching now that were part of this that have been part of this program. Coach Maddox. Right. Uh, Coach Boyd, Coach Miller, Coach Tucson, all of them. He has, uh, they've all been a part of uh, his tenure here. So not only the athletes have been able to, uh, you know, get the toolage from Coach, but some of his assistants as well that have moved on to find head coaching jobs. That first down play only good for about three. And uh, Wallace Hale has made a defensive stop, couple of stops, number 44, also the fullback. He can run too, folks. He's had four TDs and just under 300 yards rushing. In fact, averages 15 yards a carry as you take a look at uh, Tom Blake there. He knows this offense can get moving, and they have four guys that can run the ball well. Cordell looking for a cutback. And he'll get just a couple, and that's it. A few white shirts were there, including uh, Jarrell Brookins, again making a, his presence known, who has an interception return for a touchdown. And right there with the, 
what the defensive line is doing a good job of. They're, they're staying on those uh, offensive linemen. They're not letting those offensive linemen get off, get on uh, get onto linebackers, and that's what Brookhaven's doing. They're making a lot of plays with their linebackers right now. Third down and short, the line to make the 40. So they need two. Walton flanked out near side. And now he'll come in motion. They may flip it to him. They play fake. That pass too tall for everybody. He was out of bounds. He hauled it in. He almost had his second interception. But he was out of bounds when he came up with it. And Katie with them. What do you have for us guys? We mentioned at the beginning of the half 56% humidity tonight a little dehydration at the beginning of the game. We've got some activity over here on Brookhaven sideline Rodney Stewart getting both hamstrings stretched out. So that's definitely something we'll want to keep an eye on during the game guys. Uh, thank you very much Katie and uh, Gerald Brookins. If this was a Canadian football field he would have had a second interception tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh wow. Bad snap, and then he just falls on it, and you can almost count that as a turnover. Absolutely. In fact, uh, wow. Billy Croom did the right thing, but I don't think he even ever saw the snap. He was back there for the punt, and the ball was just kind of on the ground, rolling right past him, and he did the smart thing to jump on it. But as you mentioned, Eric, there's no question that counts as a turnover. That's a huge play. A special teams there for the Bearcats. Well, special teams, special teams, special teams. And Tom Blake told all of us that it could come down to special teams, and boy, has it. He just didn't see it. Yeah, it just went over just, his head. Just went, he just didn't see it. And uh, so Coach Tom Blake was right. He said special teams could be the factor. And uh, boy, a big play there. Uh, that's got to be frustrating for Coach Dunlap. Mm. And now your defense in a tough, tough spot. And Brookhaven on top, 17 to 6. And 10 minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And they're looking at a first down in goal right at the 10. So Braswell with a couple of tight ends. And now you kind of move Stewart over and offset him a little bit. Swing it out to Stewart trying to turn a corner. Well defense there far side. And he'll pick up about four. And a gang of yellow there. Yeah, it looked like Maurice Hill. Line. Yep. Made a nice play right there. That's a little swing pass all the way, trying to get the ball out in space there for uh, for Rodney Stewart. But but Hill flying out there made a nice play and show sure he's got did. some speed too. Absolutely. Good open field tackle. When you hear us say upended, that's what we're talking about. Hill the junior, six feet, 148. But it's second down and goal at the eight. Again, pair of tight ends. Look at that cut back. And once again, Stewart is in. Stewart gets his 21st touchdown on the year. Right there with a the nice cutback, as you mentioned, Eric, and that was that's just great vision. You got a great push from your offensive line, and it's just great vision and, and be able to stop on a dime the way that he did and go a different direction and just scoot right in the end zone for a second touchdown of the game. Don't know how many touchdowns coming into this week uh, Pete has. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second as we take a look at the seven up extra point uh, again brought to you by Walmart. Hurrah, we haven't jinxed you yet, have we, young man? Nope. He's three for three PATs and has a field goal to his credit. Our new score, 24 to six, with nine and a half minutes remaining, second quarter. So um, I'd like to bring uh, Matt Waddell in and, and both of you guys and talk about uh, this uh, fine running back, uh, Rodney Stewart, again with the fine vision and the cutback. He's got a little bit more power. Pete has a lot of speed because he's legit 4 3. Are these two of the best backs in uh, Central Ohio? Matt, well, yeah, no, no question. I mean, we you know we saw we saw uh, Isaiah Pete and 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 obviously we're seeing uh, Rodney Stewart tonight. And to me, they're two different kinds of runners, but very effective. One one of them's a long strider and kind of got a burst of speed. And, and uh, Rodney Stewart's got a quick guy with also with with a little bit of jets too. 
Okay, Matt, what, what's your thoughts? Well, guys, I think what you see from field level from Rodney Stewart also is just what he does in the first four or five strides. He's made some defenders look really bad right off the bat and just, you know, whether it's that little jitter step, the little stutter step, and he's got such quick live feet that, uh, you know, 5'8", 174, you can't look at a guy uh, dimensions that way and see what he does when he gets into that secondary. He gets through that first wave, uh, and he's basically doing what he wants to. So, uh, real impressive guy from field level, guys. Well, there's the foot of Marat. Gives that football a wallop. He's done a fine job. Drives him back at the five. Simpson. And out at the 20 yard line. Well, that scoring drive after the miscue on special teams covered 15 yards, two plays, and it was Stewart's seven yard touchdown run. Katie, what do you have for us? You know what, Eric? I talked to Coach Blake before the game, and the one thing that he said his team had to do early in the game was establish their running game. They are a 60 40 running to throwing team, and, you know, nine minutes left to go in this second quarter, and I think they've established that game. Yeah, no doubt. Well, Beechcroft, the Cougars are going to have to find some offense and keep uh, Brookhaven's offense off the field. This is a critical, critical series right here. No doubt. Cordell. And he's going to be stopped at the 20 yard line for minimal gain. And now all of a sudden the defense starting to fly around the ball like Andrew uh, Harrell, the junior, and the other linebackers are moving well laterally. Oh, yeah. They're definitely flying around. You can see on this replay that they are. And you obviously get confidence when your offense is moving the ball. You get a you get a defensive touchdown, and you get a huge play in special teams. You know when you, when you're up and you're leading your uh, your crosstown rivals, you get excited and you start playing a little better. And Cordell still shaking up a little bit. Probably just a cramp, but he comes uh, off the field under his own power. Hey, Buckeye fans, tune in each and every Wednesday at 10 p.m. for Buckeye Football Express. Join Ray Crawford, Deion Miller, and Gary Berry for weekly highlights, analysis, and interviews as CSN takes you inside this season. And it's Buckeye Football Express Wednesdays on CSN. They'll have highlights uh, on Wednesday of the big game on Saturday, Purdue, both teams undefeated. In fact, Purdue, this is the first time in many, many years they have been uh, at 5 0. First or second down and 10. And a little misdirection as they're running Simpson and nothing gained. Matt Waddell, you're on the sideline. What's going on down there? Well, I'm close by to Darian Cordell, who's getting his right leg trying to be stretched out in a, a good-sized cramp. You can tell he's in a pretty good amount of pain. He was battling it, guys, from the second series on, and this is, again, one of the two-way players. And Not only has he had an impact on offense and defense, he's got a 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown this season. So one of the big play guys uh, certainly out and being worked on on the sidelines. I'll keep you updated. All righty. Thank you very much, Matt. Big third down here. The line to make is the 30, just over it. And that's nine yards that they need. So expect them to air it out. They have a stacked twin package, which is now in motion to the formation. That's Walton. And they will play fake. Stewart rolling. Passes near side. Complete fullback. Hale out of the backfield. And Hale's going to have a first down. Now, this is a guy, the fullback Wallace Hale. And he fumbles it away. Oh, my. And Brookhaven comes up with it. Yeah. And oh, my goodness. I was just going to say how. Well, he uh, as a receiver coming out of the backfield, but then there's the live football and they pounce on it. Yeah, they did. And as you mentioned, it looked like he had a first down drive was gonna, going in the right direction. You, you gain some momentum and then you get the fumble and the Bearcats get the ball back. And this is in, in two consecutive possess or excuse me, two uh, two times this half. They've gotten turnovers for the defense now. Cameron Gunnell, the senior, two interceptions and now a fumble recovery to his credit. And an official's timeout. Probably want to get on the same page. Want to talk some things over. 24 to 6. There's still just under eight minutes left in the second quarter. And that's 24 to 6. And now scrimmaging on a short field. This this thing can get out of hand right here, right now. Braswell under center. Toss it. And oh, they reversed it. Look out, this is Dominic Johnson. 
And Johnson picks up a block on the far side and will turn the corner down inside of the 30 at the 27 or 28 yard line. So they're throwing the whole playbook at him now. Oh, there's no question. You got to you got to give him everything so you can win. I'll tell you what, Dominic Johnson just showed <laughs> pure speed right there. Looked like I had a couple guys at the angle on him. He just turned the corner and picked up, you know, seven yards on first down right there. Made that reverse look like it was going to be in big trouble and turn into a positive gainer. Now the miscue on the punt snap, fumble, the interception. You can almost say it's officially two turnovers. You can almost call it three. Sure. And Brookhaven has been scrimmaging on a very short field in the first half. Now a play, no, it is a play fake. And that pass complete here near side, Demetrius Johnson. And he'll be down at the 22-yard uh, line. I went back and forth on that one. I didn't know who had it. Yeah, Quante Braswell, uh, Braswell did a good job on that, that throw. Once again, he, he reads his first key, goes to his second key and, just his key, and just hits it back in the flats, and that's a sign of a good quarterback that understands what's going on in the defensive side of the ball and where his guys are. When just get the ball to, to your guy in the flat here on, on, on the third check down and, and give him a chance to uh, maybe make a couple yards. Johnson, only a sophomore. First down and 10. Three receivers slotted to the right. Braswell, now he's flushed out of the pocket and he's going to be dropped as Chaz Nelson, the defensive end, comes in and sacks him. That is his fifth sack of the year. Yeah, and Chaz Nelson, there's no give up in him right there. Looked like he was blocked, well blocked. It looked like Braswell had plenty of time, and Chaz Nelson, 6'2, 210, comes around the corner and lays out and just grabs the shoestring there of Braswell. Nice play by him. Very athletic play. Looks like Braswell's going to break loose. He's got he's got a little wheels himself, and and right there just lays out and picks up picks up the sack and, and you know a well timed sack right now because this defense needs something to get him going. You said it, well timed sack. Second down, 14. Braswell seven step drop set up the middle screen in and out of the hands of Andrew Harrell. He's the uh, Backup running back, he'll come in, and yes, he is a uh, receiving threat. And you've seen that Stewart was a receiving threat. They spread the ball around real well on this team. Yeah, just a nice little screen pass, and Braswell does a good job bringing, uh, bringing the defensive lineman in like you're supposed to at that quarterback position, make them think that they're going to get a sack, and then just dumping that ball off and just out of the hands there of, uh, the, of the running back. And unfortunately, because it was a nice call, just not, just not well executed right there. Harrell and Johnson are both in, or Stewart rather, both in. Stewart slotted out to the right there looking his way. Now flushed out of the pocket and is going to be sacked again. So now the Cougars defense stepping up play. And who got him, Matt? Well, the first guy there was Jordan Spivey, and then the rest of the defense came. I don't know who you give that to, but Jordan Spivey, 6'2", 230-pound uh, uh, D lineman right there just, just playing his heart out, knowing that this game's not over. This means a lot to these guys. This is a crosstown rival. No one on this field for Beechcroft has beaten Brookhaven uh, in their high school career, so they know how important it is, and they know this is their last chance, these seniors, to go out there and try to get a victory for the, Bear, for the, for the Cougars. The line to make is the 10, and this is going to be a 47-yard effort. They said he had a leg. Good pass. It's a fake, and Beechcroft was ready for it, and they're going to eat him up. And they're going to get good field position as Gerald Brookins can't find anywhere to go. So when we come back, the Cougars will be on offense. They needed a defensive stop there, and boy, they got one. 24-6, 5.39 remaining second quarter. Welcome back, everybody, and a heck of a defensive stop by the Cougars. Now scrimmaging in good field position at the 36, and they need to do something with it offensively, trailing 24 to 6 here on CSN. Well, there's uh, Cordell, Tom Blake. He knows that there's still some football left. And if the Cougars find that offense that they found on their first series in the first quarter, look out. Play fake. Stewart. And that pass is going to be gobbled up for actually a loss of a yard. And Ger Gerald Brookins, boy, these defensive guys, man, they fly to the football. They're fast. Yeah, and Brookins has been all over the field now. Interception for a touchdown. He got the big hit of the half. He's making tackles all everywhere. He's, he's in that safety position. He's sitting back there. He's reading the quarterback's eyes, and he's reacting. 
When you have a guy that comes up and like, can react with speed like that, and also has the ability to, to hit and lay some, you know, lay, lay a little contact on some guys, you know, that's nice to have back there at that, that free safety position. Second down and 11. Stewart with a call of zone number, work that left side and only gets a couple of uh, yards there. All righty. Uh, Tonight's American Red Cross volunteer of the game. Well, we'll have Ma Matt Waddell introduce you to her. Matt. Eric, thanks very much. We're with Kathy May on the sidelines, and we were just talking a little bit off camera, and it's been a few years now that you've been working with the concessions. Just tell us a little bit about that, and that it's uh, special, I know, to be here at Beechcroft helping out. Well, I love to work in the concession stand. Um, I try to get here as much as possible during the soccer games, during the football games. We um, pick up hot dogs for you, chili dogs. We have the nachos. We have all the candy and pops. When you're good and thirsty, we've got it for you. And we were talking, too, you've got a couple of daughters that are in the band right now here at Beach Rock. Yes, they do. I have twin daughters that are seniors. They're both in the band. They also play soccer here. They're on the swim team, so they're very involved. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much for your help. Thank you. Eric, we'll go back up to you. All righty, thank you, Matt. To find out how you can help save a life, go to the bloodsaveslives.org. And we appreciate Red Cross's um, sponsorship of our volunteer of the game. And thank you, Kathy May. Well, fourth down, he uh, gave it a ride, came up a little bit short, decision time, and uh, Coach Dunlap, he sees some things in his offense that tells him that we're still in this game, so he's not going to flirt around and give them a short field but look out you know because uh, you never know yeah there's some snap problems too last time let's see if they've right. corrected those they faked it and i was just getting ready to say cordell was the up back and they were going to fake that high I, they, they just stole what i was going to tell you i kid <laughs> you not <laughs> i said that was going to be a possibility i was thinking it anyway well i'll tell you what you were thinking it and, and uh, so was coach dunlap and, and they they the the Cougars went out there, and what they did was execute it. Sometimes you can call it, you can call it the right time, but if you don't execute it, it's no good. And right there, the Cougars went out there, executed, picked up a, a fourth down, and, and they're still moving the chains. And they faked that high pass, what uh, bit them earlier. And when I saw that Cordell was, you know, the up back there, oh, I said, there's a possibility there. And if I could have got that out, I could have been a couple of folks. They, they would have said, hey, was a yeah, they would have said, man, that, that guy's a genius. No, just kidding, folks. <laughs> Spread the field out. You have four receivers trips to the bottom of your screen. Now in motion is Nelson, and he'll make it a twin package far side. Toss it. And having to change direction, and then going to be collared and shirt-tailed tackle. They're a slew of white, including number 22. That's uh, Darrell Powell, who comes in with 62 tackles. In fact, Powell had 19 stops against Hilliard Davidson. 19 in one game. Can you believe that? Oh, that's a lot of tackles. Well, let me tell you something else. He shares that stat with uh, Trevani Wallace, who had 19 tackles in the same game. Both of them, Wallace and Powell, combined 38 tackles. Woo. That's a lot of ice buckets the next day, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Timeout on the field. The Cougars will talk things over after the loss. And they're looking at about a second down and 16. But what a heck of a fake that was. Billy Crone just kind of faked yeah, fake like the high snap. Was, you know what? He, last time he didn't fake it. He just went over his head. So there was there was something to it. But uh, yeah, you know, you look at the clock, two minutes uh, and one second left, and and you wanna you wanna obviously keep moving the change. You, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to give the ball back to the Bearcats because. With the kind of guys they have, especially Rodney Stewart, as we mentioned, you know, he, he came into the he came into the game as the second leading scorer in Central Ohio with 118 points. He's already got two touchdowns this game, and he can break off a run at any time. So, what you don't want to do is give the ball back to the Bearcats. Well, fans, you can relive all of your favorite CSN broadcast moment, moments. They're all available on DVD, from high school to professional, racing, track and field. We have them all. All you have to do is call us at 575-9000 for more information and relive all that is here on CSN. So after the loss, second down, 16, out of the gun. Four receivers, swing it out near side. This could be a double pass. No, he's going to elect to run. This is Cordell. 
And he's gang tackled only a gain of one or two yards. And I go back to the defensive play of the linebackers and defensive secondary of Brookhaven are very fast. Yeah, no question. And just another swing pass out here to Cordell. And you know, this is a second or third time tonight where we've seen some footing issues where the the, gr the ground this time gets a little wet, and and then that's when the the, the turf gets a uh, little uh, little bad for the cleats, and the cleats just give out right underneath you. And, and uh, so you know, you wonder how you know how the field's going to react here as, as it gets a little bit uh, a little bit dewier. Well, the line to make is the 33, so they have two plays. Cordell in motion. See if they don't look to get just half of it back and go on fourth down. The rush forces Stewart to get on his horse. And now he's going to air it out. Double covered and intercepted at the 15-yard line. And guess who? Yep, it's Brookins. Brookins has been the, pl the player this quarter. We didn't hear much about him in the first quarter. In the second quarter, he has just taken over. Big hit, second interception, plays all over the field. But you know what? I don't fault Marvin Stewart for that because that is as good as a punt if you think about it because yeah. they're going to be scrimmaging inside of the 20 and they still had 16 yards to to make so that's as good as a punt in my opinion. Yeah no question you got to give your your athletes a chance we talked about we talked about it before throwing it up to uh, to Ron Walton he is 6'4 195 pounds and you know that's kind of the Randy Moss theory throw it up see if he can make a play if he doesn't. No worst case scenario interception as you mentioned it's just a long punt and it gives a long field here for the for the Bearcats but one thing we also talked about is they got Roddy Stewart he could break off one at any moment. Yeah no doubt now yeah. there's Billy Chrome I'm talking over with his teammate still another half we have a minute and one second so we have 61 seconds and they're going to run him with the draw and Stewart will pick up 12. And he, yeah, he is a tough kid. He'll, he'll lower his head down and his shoulder down in between the tackles, eh? Yeah, no question. I talked to the coach before the before the half, or excuse me, before the game. He said he benches over 300 and squats just under 500. So this is a strong kid who likes to, does, isn't afraid of contact. Wow. And again, what a cutback there at the line of scrimmage as he squeezes out eight. All that little dance to the right, that little bunny hop to the right allowed him to pick up all those yards. Yeah, he's got good balance. I tell you what, Eric, who's ever heard of a two minute offense that consists of all running plays? <laughs> oh, you're right. Well, why wouldn't you? Clock down to 30 seconds now. And they're going to continue to run. And this time he's not going to get anywhere. Not that time. Deion King, the senior, 6'5, 200, able to gobble him up. And that may be the last play of the first half. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be. It looks like uh, Coach Blake's going to just let this thing run out and and take that 24-6 lead into halftime. And they've played a they played a great half and they've come up with a couple big plays in all phases of the game. Well, after uh, the first half of play, 24 to six in a ball game in the very first uh, quarter, it was uh, Brookhaven that took the opening kickoff, got a few first downs, Beechcroft uh, stiffened defensively, and they converted on a 30-yard. Uh, field goal by uh, Ibrahim Marah and then Beechcroft took their first possession marched it down to the uh, length of the field and then it was Brookhaven all over the place after that on both sides of the ball. Katie with them is standing by with the coach Katie take her away. After Beechcroft had got ahead of you you've had the rest of the big plays. Yeah the kids have done a good job and they, they uh, didn't give up fought back. Uh, it was a nice play fake there by uh, Quante to uh, Rodney Stewart. Great catch, nice play. And then, of course, the interception by Brookins uh, really got us going. I think broke their back a little bit temporarily. Let's put it that way. There's another half to play, and they're a good football team. They have some talent. They, they can do some things. What do you tell the guys heading into the locker room now? Oh, just like I say, I mean, this is just a half a game. There's another half, and those guys are over there are not going to give up. They're not going to quit. And, and they have some football players, and they can break a big one too at any time. So uh, I know 24-6 is, is a, a nice lead, but it's not enough. Not enough. Great. Thanks, thank Coach. You. Matt, Eric, back to you. Well, thank you very much, Katie. Anthony Thornton is the offensive coordinator for the Bearcats and uh, the, the old offensive uh, coach. Done well, yes. hadn't they? <laughs> At intermission, 24 to 6, Brookhaven on top. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to Beechcroft High School, the home of the Cougars. They trail their cross uh, town rival 24 to 6. We say cross town, they're only like a mile and a half apart. Uh, Beechcroft up on uh, 161 and Beechcroft Avenue and Brookhaven, as you know, Carl Road and Morris. And right across the street from my partner's alma mater there <laughs> in St. Francis de Sales in a ball game tonight against uh, Watterson. And in fact, I think they're trailing six to three at uh, halftime. That's so right. That's don't, don't, don't get cocky though, Eric. <laughs> no, I'm still not getting cocky. <laughs> no, I'm for you. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Matt Waddell, he stands by with uh, Tom uh, Dunlap. Coach, obviously you got your first score of the game to get you underway, get you a lead after that. Some big plays the other way. What'd you tell your guys here at the half? Well, we got to take away the mistakes. I mean, uh, the, I've never seen uh, what happened on that pump before. My kid hears a whistle, looks over, just setting the ball in the center snap. That hurt us bad. Uh, we got to get rid of the mistakes, the uh, interception, the fumbles, try to put a drive together and crawl back one touchdown at a time. Appreciate your time, Coach. Good luck. All right, thank you. Coach Dunlap, guys, up to you. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Yes, he's in fact that the offense showed they can move the ball, take it one touchdown at a time. They're still in this thing. Oh, no question, especially that leader, uh, Coach Dunlop. I mean, he's not, he hasn't been around uh, for this long on accident. He's it's been in the playoffs 11 times, and and uh, he knows how to motivate young people, and he's going to do it this half. He understands, he's going to tell them, you know, that as they know, this is crosstown rival. This is for the City League Division North. You got to come out and play in the second half and take it. Well, and they get the football to start the second half of play too. So that's a plus. Yeah. And let's see if uh, Darren Cordell can get a nice return or maybe uh, Joe Simpson. They're both back deep to receive the uh, kickoff. They're already set and ready but the uh, Brookhaven Bearcats they're in no rush to get on the field. That's the backup quarterback Philip Johnson number 11 you're looking at there. He is a sophomore and uh, they like him too. Uh, young pup. And uh, he'll be filling the, the shoes of Braswell once he's finished. So now they're uh, lined up. Uh, Brookhaven, as you know, blue slacks and the road white jerseys. And Beechcroft uh, doing the Oregon Duck and Minnesota gopher look with the all yellow and the brown. Oh, what a big half he's had. Oh, Gerald man. Brookins, oh my. <laughs> Yeah, that's one. That's one. Uh, one guy definitely that the uh, Cougars have to watch out for. If Brookins has a half like he had in the first half, this thing could could be a blowout. Absolutely. Uh, two uh, touch. I mean, two interceptions. One for a touchdown. And again, that uh, that interception that Stewart threw at the end of the first half uh, that was as good as a punt. So, yeah. You know. Well, Rodney Stewart, he's performed well. So Mara gives this football a wallop, and we have a chance for a return here. Uh, Cordell going to be wrapped up and dropped, but not before he brings the football out across the 33. And uh, we welcome you back. Uh, high school football action once again this week, along with Matt Durazio, Matt Waddell, Katie Witham. Happy birthday, dear. I'm Eric Packer. As we bring you all of this exciting football action each and every week, week number seven, Brookhaven and Beechcroft, both teams 3-0. In the uh, City North Division, Beechcroft is Division Two, and of course, you know Brookhaven after winning the championship in 2004, uh, they were celebrated by moving up to Division One, oh, man. playing the big boys there. Uh, not that Division Two football isn't uh, pretty good; it is. Yes. You know, you take a look at Watterson, DeSales, Canfield, and uh, schools like that. Marvin Stewart, a good first half, uh, except for the two picks. And I take again. I, take, I said this before. I take one of those away. Sure. Uh, because you know you either get a big offensive play, or it's a punt, basically. So you know you don't uh, you don't score against him on that uh, second interception. Well, Marvin Stewart will work out of the gun, and he has Cordell on his left side. First down and ten. First snap, second half. Good protection offensive line allows him to go big far side. The battle for it incomplete and boy there were a couple of guys there. Brookins was there but it was Andrew Harrell who was uh, the first over there. In fact no that was Cameron Gunnell. Sorry. I thought that was 25. Gunnell wears jersey 35. Sorry folks. Yeah I like uh, I like a beach cross philosophy right here. Coach Dunlop said let's air one out. Let's try to get a big play here to start the second half. And uh, let, let her fly, and 
Stewart did a good job putting it out there for receivers. A good play by the Bearcats, but no harm, no foul right there. That was a good throw on yeah. the ball, wasn't it? Yeah, took a shot at it, didn't get it, now second down. Two backs this time out of the gun. And he'll keep it in the belly of Wallace Hale, the fullback, the sophomore, who we said averages 15 yards a carry, just under 300 yards coming in tonight, but a threat out of the backfield. Has three TDs receiving and 160 yards. Yeah, he's a guy who's he's scored four uh, rushing and three receiving. So, you know, he's known on defense for flying around that linebacker position. Can also be a threat on offense as well. Conversion down, possession down, whatever you want to call it. Third down and six. The line to make is the 44. Clock stop momentarily. We had a whistle and now they'll wind. 11 10. And now 11 07 clock running. Motion in Walton toward the formation. A little play fake and roll. Looking for Walton now. Threw his hands at the 40. He was open. Oh, Walton was open and he couldn't bring it in. Yeah, Marvin Stewart do, do a nice pass on the run right there. And talked about Ron Walton and his size and the ball was put up about only place he could put it and, and just kind of took his eye off the ball right here on the run. Stewart makes a nice throw, but it definitely been a first down. Maybe it got a little bit extra after that, but you know, those are the type of plays you got to make in, the, in this game. You, you got to catch it with your hands, you got to catch oh, it with yeah. your eyes, you got to bring yeah. it in. You can't let those opportunities slip away. Well, Billy Croom, good pass. And his punt. Oh, fielded on the fly. This is Stewart. Stewart breaks a tackle, look out, Stewart on the run. And I don't think they're going to get him. They've been looking to return one, he dives in, touchdown. I'll tell you what. <laughs> like he got shot out of a cannon, Eric. But hold everything. Flag down. Inside of the 10, this may not go for six. I think it's a celebration penalty, actually. Is it? Yeah. Well, they got a lot to celebrate about. No, no question. Rodney Stewart did a little dive at the end, a little Reggie Bush-esque, but uh, definitely got in a little, a little excitement there for his third touchdown of the game. Wow. One. Well, let's take a look at the seven-up extra point. Brought to you by Walmart. And we'll get to the replay here momentarily. What an electric return. And he fielded it on the fly. Oh, man. That's what I liked. Throw caution to the wind. Stewart hauled it in and took it. We'll have the highlight for you after this 7 up. PAT brought to you by Walmart. And we talked about that, how that guy was a game changer, and he did it an instant right there. As I mentioned, it looked like he shot out, got shot out of a can. He made one cut and beat everybody down the sidelines. Cheerleaders are waiting for him when he dove in the end zone. Remember what we talked about. Special teams. And Coach Tom Blake said that more than anything he felt could be the factor. And so far it's proven to be exactly that. Now discussion on uh, what to do here. Let's see. It's usually one of those penalties they mark off either uh, uh, for the oh. kickoff or before the PAT, but anyway, we'll we'll find out what's going on. And I'll move them back. So the PAT try will be more like a 35-yard uh, field goal. So again, Hurrah has been stellar. Good rush this time. That kit may be a little wide, and it is as he misses it right. So the only blemish for Brookhaven, but our new score, 30 to 6. And how they got to the 30th point. Well, you watch. One cut, there it was. Just goes right up the sidelines, got a wall. And we'll see you later. Just received word that they uh, nicknamed him, and there's where the penalty was from. Yeah. Yeah. His nickname is Speedy, and we talked <laughs> about between him and Pede, 
Uh, you know who is probably one of the better backs and there's some others too. We don't want to leave them out but uh, I'm just comparing these two. And uh, statistically these two are the tops in the, in the in central Ohio. Correct. We've yep. seen them both play and right and both uh -huh. times and both guys that put on a show we yes. saw them play so. You know when you guys show up in big games and we, we know we obviously we did the CSN game of the week and it was big games and and right now uh, Stewart has shown up and, and against Grandview a couple weeks back. There's no question right. Isaiah P had a great game as well had and the, the game winner and the week before that Grandview game he scored seven touchdowns and then you had Stewart scoring seven touchdowns oh, or something like that. It's crazy. <laughs> those guys are <laughs> those guys are just running the football with uh, video game yet. numbers. There you go. This is going to be Cordell. Oh, Collard. Whoa, special teams hit coming from number 32 that time. And that is Demetrius McLaughlin, the 5'9, 200 pound junior. You know who else was in there? Brookins. Kid's been all over the field, defensively and special teams. And the one thing about special teams is you got to have heart to be on that, on those units. You can't run down there and, and, and be a little nervous. You got to go down there and and, uh, and give it your all and then kind of put that helmet right into the in the shoulder pads right in the chest and, and that's what those guys are doing. First down. And 10. Trip receivers stacked up right to the right of the offensive line and nothing doing in the backfield. And now Brookhaven just taking over this game, it appears. Eric, you mentioned uh, you know, we talked go, go all the way back to the, to the first quarter, and Beechcroft had that their first drive. They went down and scored seven points, and ever since then, the Bearcat defense has just been flying around. You talked about it in the first half, and there's no question they have some confidence. They have something on their side where they just they feel like they can fly around and they can make tackles in this backfield. Two block field goals. It's the difference in that uh, Hilliard Davidson game. And, uh, and a missed extra point as well. And, or they could be sitting right now at 6 0. Oh. After the loss, second down and 13. Stewart flushed. And avoids the rush there from Wallace. Airs it out and again incomplete. Matt Waddell, what do you have for us, buddy? Well, guys, we are down here with the CSN student of the week. It's Cassandra Sampur, who is a senior here at Beechcroft and uh, thanks so much for spending a little time we've just been chatting off air a little bit I know you don't always uh, attend football games but we're glad you're here tonight and just tell us a little bit about uh, what you like doing here at Beechcroft. Um, while I'm here at Beechcroft I like to uh, join the academic team in their games as much as possible and currently I am part of the Chase Leadership Academy. And as a senior you're already looking at schools I'm sure you were telling me uh, Otterbein and Ohio State or uh, places you're looking for next year. Mm -hmm. I plan to go to one of those at least. Well, thanks very much. We appreciate your time. Congratulations for being CSN Student of the Week. Thank you. All right, guys, back up to you. All right, well, thank you, Matt. Matt DeRazio saying, hey, you know, that Otterbein's not too shabby. Yeah, being Cardinal. <laughs> it's a great experience. The line to make is the 30. They need 15 yards, and they're going big. Triple coverage over the head of everybody. And the back safety was uh, <laughs> Brookins was the man deep right oh, yeah. there. He's everywhere. I like him. Oh, yeah, he does a good uh, job of just into the right place. He does a good job reading that quarterback's eyes and, and knowing where the ball is going to be and he's always there. Both these teams have you know celebrity athletes that have moved on to big division one programs. So many names to mention you know them. we won't even open that door because there's oh, man. just so many but each team it seems like has two or three division one prospects and a lot of times top 20 division one prospects. Now forced to punt. Billy Crooms rushed and he's hammered. That's going to be a personal foul. Uh, no doubt about that one. In fact, they drove him right in the ground. I mean, if, you, if there was ever a roughing the punter, this one's it. No mistake about this one. Oh, oh. Man, that was John Bays that came right up the middle there for Brookhaven. And, and as hard as he hit Croom on the punter, it, oh. I'm surprised he didn't hit the ball, and I think he's probably surprised as well. He just kind of ran right through the punter there and missed the ball. Well, Croom's a tough kid. He got up after that. I mean, that head was right in his chest. So remember now, OHSA, no automatic first down personal foul. 
but they will pick up 15 yards, which will give it to them. The 15 yards, they, they, they get, look at this. You know how they lay out, like you were talking to Matt? Oh, oh man. Yeah, boom, they will do that. There's no. <laughs> Kroon kicked that right over May's head. He's probably thinking, I didn't hit that. So he was adjusting his face mask. And you know, that, was, that was just an effort penalty right there. You can never get on Mays for that. Came right. right up the middle, laid out for it, just missed the ball. Well, Tom Blake in his first miscue on special teams will allow Beechcroft to have a new series of downs here. 931, trailing 30 to 6. Run a little option and a little keeper. And nothing doing. As this time, Galvin Bonner and company there, including uh, also Giovanni Wallace there, number 53 defensively as well. Yeah, at this point in the game, sometimes it's hard because you know, look at the scoreboard, it's 30 to 6, and you, you want to hit them with a maybe a big hitter, but you got to stick to your game plan. There's certainly, a, you know, there's a lot of time on the clock. You got your timeouts. There's still a chance to, you know, break a couple big plays. And you, if, you're, if you're Coach Dunlop, stick to the game plan, and you hope that uh, the, the players can go out there and execute. Kroom is flanked out to the near side. And the fullback uh, dive just a little bit for a couple of yards. Don't miss high school football gridiron action Friday, October the 12th. Catch high school game night with Martha Shark and Jeff Logan presented by WTDA and CSN at 930. Then stay tuned for exciting football action for CSN's doubleheader featuring the Patriots of Olentangy Liberty and the Golden Eagles of Big Walnut. Big Walnuts for real, folks, and the Bulldogs of Bloom Carroll hosting the Indians of Canal Winchester, who's having a fine year. That's all here on the Columbus Sports Network, which is local sports now. Third down and four. Out route, incomplete miscommunication there. He was open on the drag, or the out route was Chaz Nelson, the tight end, and unable to hook up, so they're forced to punt again. And Eric, we've been in quite a few of these situations throughout the year, and you always wonder, you know, do you go for it? Obviously, they faked a punt before, and they were right. successful. But you look at the score, 30 to 6, and as I mentioned, you obviously don't want to get away from the game plan. You don't want to panic. But at the same time, this is a, a reasonable amount of yards where you could uh, could get it. And at the same time, you got uh, Rodney Stewart at the other end that you that just you just gave up a, a long touchdown on. They will punt and they'll angle it. They're not going to flirt with it. Takes a nice bounce for Beechcroft. Stays in and skews right. In. <laughs> Would not go out of bounds. Just went right down that sideline like a rail. Let's take a timeout. 30 to 6. Brookhaven will scrimmage when we return here on CSN Local Sports Now. Welcome back, everybody. 30 to 6, our score, as the uh, band was very entertaining. The Cougars and the Bearcats. Uh, and the ball game for Brookhaven has been a butte. Uh, Beechcroft they needs a defensive stop if they're going to try to get back in this thing. And Stewart, very dangerous. This time tripped up at the uh, line of scrimmage, only a gain of one. And I believe that was uh, Wallace Hale, if I'm not mistaken. And I also see Chris Noble there and didn't catch which one, 46 or 44 there defending. You, know, you look at this Beechcroft defense, and they really have not played poorly this game. They've contained uh, Rodney Stewart somewhat. You, you look at special teams, you look at bad field position, you look at interception right. or touchdowns, and you right. know, you're, once again, you're, you're playing from behind. Braswell hadn't had to do much. Oh, how did he get away from that? But then uh, coming in and uh, making the play, Chaz Nelson, number nine. And also Hale, Hale 44 has been everywhere defensively. Yeah, Hale's got to have at least, you know, eight, nine tackles so far. Right. And, and as I mentioned, the defense it hasn't played so bad. And you can tell these guys are out there flying around and it means something to them. And he ran out of that tackle. And then uh, and then got him. Possession down, they need seven, line to make the 31. And as we mentioned, Braswell, 748 yards, 10 TDs, picked up his 11th tonight. He's not had to really do much, but he does take a five-step drop, and he's going big time, and he was open. He lays out, couldn't haul it in. Dominic Johnson was open on a vertical route. 
Tell you what, <laughs> Tom Blake isn't holding anything back. He's no. up 30 to six, and he's he's going for broke right there. He's got a couple ver two vertical guys running up the the right side of the field, and I'll tell you what, Braswell just missed him. Otherwise, it was another big play and another big score. Well, let's take a look. As you mentioned, going for the home run ball, and a good pass that was really well thrown and just oh. <laughs> The Tom first Blake. punt. Guess who's the punter? Uh -oh. It's Rodney Stewart. And if he he should take it out of the end zone and it'll be a safety. But with his electric moves, he can do something with it. And he did. He brought it across the 10 out to the 12. But the heads up thing would have been to kick that thing out of the end zone, give up the two points, because now the Cougars have a break that they've been looking for, and this could be huge. Oh, it could be a huge break, and I'll tell you what, anybody else in Central Ohio, that's a safety. Anybody else in Central Ohio, that's a safety, but with Rodney Stewart, he gets out, and right here, he stops on a dime, makes a couple people move, go past him, and, and uh, he gets it out of the end zone, but uh, as you mentioned, Cougars have a great field position right now. And they can build on this. Now attacking, first down and 10, just outside of the 10. With an eye formation and Cordell will dot. No, nope, now they go to the split backs out of the gun. Run the option. And the fullback hail is stacked up, nowhere to go. Well, there's no question you got to take advantage of this, this, uh, this field position. The defense has done something for you here. They got the ball back, you got good field position. Now the Cougars have got to find a way to get in, get the ball in the end zone. Matt Waddell, what do you have for us there, buddy? Well, no question, guys. I was right down where that punt went over the head of Stewart right there. And if it's anybody else, like you said, they would just take a knee in the end zone, go right out the back of the end zone, whatever it was going to be to run out of that play. And we'll see how it works out. Obviously, in a situation where Beechcroft is down 24 guys, plays into their hands uh, to have the two-point conversion here, they're going to have to get scores of eight. So if they can sneak into the end zone, a perfect chance for them to go for two. So we'll see if they can uh, they can put something on them. Well, is there a chance, Matt Waddell, that uh, Rodney Stewart is as, as, as electric as he is, all that athleticism he has, did that probably be a factor saying, hey, look, I can still do something yeah. with this, and it came back and bit him? No question about it. That, that's a kid who has clearly all season long and certainly tonight done what he's wanted to on this football right. field, and, and that's a kid also who's just trying to make a play, and you can't right. fault the effort no. for that. But if he gets back to the sidelines, you know the coaches are saying, hey, uh, when we're up 24, let's give up two, punt the ball back, and make them go a long field as opposed to giving them a short field right here. Absolutely, because the Bearcat defense has been flying to the ball. Let's go and take a look and see what could have happened to Wallace Hale here? He just got rolled up under his leg. Oh, let's hope that 44 is okay there. Yeah, especially from the defensive side of the ball. This is a guy who's given effort on offense, but you've called his name, Eric. I know at least nine, ten times on defense, so we'll see how he is. More football action. Division three football on CSN begins October the 13th as Ohio Wesleyan takes on Denison. And then October 20th, it's Otterbein versus Capital. And then on the 27th, Capital will host Mount Union. Ooh. Oh, that's a big one. Check your local listings for game times here on CSN. Me and Katie are going to go at it on that Otterbein yeah, uh, yeah, Capital game. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, dropping the gloves on her. <laughs> Oh, Katie, she said, I'll take him out on the soccer field. I'll tell you, she <laughs> may wear you out out there, buddy. <laughs> Second down, rolling. Stewart, corner of the end zone. Oh, gosh, did he just lose it? I mean, if he puts his hands up, does he haul that one in? Talking about Ron Walton, or was it overthrown? Looked like it might have been a little bit overthrown. Uh, and as you mentioned, Ron Walton, we talked about the size all game, and he, maybe he reaches his hands out and, and maybe sneaks a, sneaks a touchdown here. I don't know if he saw it. Yeah, just out of the no, range. It was over. It was overthrown. He couldn't have come up with that. I don't care if he's Shaquille O'Neal. He's not coming <laughs> up with that. One. Third down and goal. Is this four down territory? No, oh, no, doubt. no doubt. No doubt. Especially it's with that 80% uh, two point <laughs> conversion. We know we're not kicking a field goal, are they? No. Still plenty of time. You have six minutes, two seconds here, and then another 12 minutes. And zero for six. The stat through the air tonight, or in the second half tonight. Now you have a little offset eye off to the right and out of the gun. Fake the swing, Statue of Liberty. And the Statue of Liberty is going to be stopped well short. Oh. I like it. Bring it out and do a little Boise State right there. All but right. the problem is when Boise State ran, now everybody's 
running it and everyone's uh, hip to the game and, and that's exactly what uh, Brookhaven was right there. What that was was that's disciplined football right there. Guys that are playing their responsibilities, not not chasing down uh, action going one way. They're staying they're staying home and the ball comes right to them and they make a great play. And we apologize. We do not have a number 11 to share with you. So we apologize for that. So. Or check that. No, that was 12. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was Shane uh, Mathurin. That was uh, Shane Mathurin, the, the senior. This copyrighted telecast is the sole property of the Columbus Sports Network and is intended solely for the private, non commercial use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, publication, reproduction, transmission, or unauthorized use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this telecast without the express written consent of the Columbus Sports Network is strictly prohibited. Matt Waddell, do you have an injury report for us? Well, guys, we're close to Wallace Hale down here, number 44, the sophomore for Beechcroft, trying to work out that left ankle right now. The uh, trainers took the shoe off for a second, but have put it right back on, and he's actually running some pretty decent speed drills down here on the sideline. So we may see number 44 back here pretty shortly. Going back to the number 11 and number 12, <clears throat> we had uh, number 12 is Shane uh, Mathurin, and he is wearing jersey number 11. So 12 is 11. Uh, so that's why the confusion there. Fourth down. If they're going to make this a ball game, it's going to happen right here. No chance for a first down. They have to hit Pater. Quick motion for Cordell. And they're looking. Middle of the field. It's open. Incomplete. And Brooke Haven will take uh, over on downs. It was open for a moment, and then it was gone. For a second, that middle was open. Yeah, Marvin Stewart took a shot at, tried to fire right up the middle of the field. Had a, had a couple receivers there, but they were they were well covered. They were they were, they were they were well covered, and one of the guys that was covering them was your guy, Brookins. Well, I, I tell <laughs> you, when we do our CSN players of the game, I'm looking real close at the, him defensively. I mean, you can say Stewart. I like seeing defensive guys win every now and then. But who know we still have a lot of football left. Two interceptions for Brookins, all kinds of tackles, and a return for a touchdown in the first half of play. So now Brookhaven will go back on offense as they turn the Cougars away, who blew a golden opportunity there. That was their chance. And now uh, Brookhaven will run the legs with uh, Stewart. Look at that nice move. Oh, yeah, he is good. And now you have a flag down. And you may have a hold here when he turned the near corner. Eric, he was coming right at us. You can tell how fast he is, and he can cut and he can move around. This is a special player. Oh, look out. I thought that football was going to get him. <laughs> Mr. Maul Brown, he used, to, he used to do my games back in high school. I remember him. So he's been around a while. Oh, man. So they call a good game for you? The ones who won, the ones who lost, he really struggled. <laughs> well, Matt Brown says holding on the offense, so that'll bring it back from the uh, spot of the foul. And let's see if we can't take a look at the infraction here. But I like this move right here. Watch this. <laughs> Boom. There it is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just get. Oh, I love that stuff. That is. Uh, whether you play on the Xbox or PlayStation 2, what have you, that's that little juke move that I perform so well. I have fast thumb and finger. What button is that? The X button? Well, for me, it uh, is the upper right. <laughs> upper right with the right index finger. Boom! From behind, he gets away. Here's Braswell showing some athleticism as he almost got pummeled <laughs> from the backside. Is able to escape and bring it out across the 15. And that's how the night's almost been for the for the Cougars. Looked like Nelson was going to get a safety or there thereabouts. And once again, Braswell sneaks out. He kind of had that sixth sense in the back of his head, sneaks away. And it would have been a big game changer here, definitely in the back of the end zone. And it was Nelson just missed him. Yep. But Braswell does a good job making a couple people miss and turn it into a positive play right there. And a noble number 46 there to finish it. Offset eye. And he has a first down. I mean, shifty. 
mean, you're talking about a guy who scored seven touchdowns in, in, in one game. I mean, that to me is just unbelievable. And as you mentioned, just just a shifty runner right here. Got vision, kind of got the ball out there like a like a loaf of bread. He could yeah. tuck it in a little tighter, but when you're playing with confidence. Sometimes you don't think anything can go wrong. Clock running, four minutes and two seconds. Quarter number three, 30 to six. Our score. Brooke Haven looking to uh, go six and one. Should be undefeated. And any, any Brookhaven fan and the coaching staff will tell you they lost uh, in a heartbreaker to Davidson after the play fake Braswell rolls that pass a little low. He'll uh, shoot himself in the foot there and you saw him hit himself in the helmet and said I missed that one. Yeah and this is you know obviously we're, we have a lot of time left in this game but 30 to 6 and you know, this we mentioned in the opening how important this game is just for playoff points especially in that division one in that in this Columbus region. Brookhaven wants to make the playoffs. They get a win tonight, and they run, the, you know, they run the rest of the table, and they're going to they're going to be sitting pretty there for the Division One playoffs. Daryl Powell, uh, one of those fine linebackers. They have some speed on defense. Remember, we told you had 19 tackles against Philly Davidson in, in that game that they lost, and uh, again, uh, Giovanni Wallace also had 19 in that ball game. Second down and 10. Braswell on a seven step drop throw the middle screen guess who Stewart's loose Stewart's got a first down Stewart still on the move Stewart almost broke free at the 37. Man. <laughs> tell you what. There's a lot of guys that get a hand on him but there's not a lot that are bringing him down. No. <laughs> Maurice Hill did a good job there making. Nice little screen once again nicely executed there by Coach Blake called that and uh, like I said hands on hands on missed tackle but Maurice Hill does Good job making a nice overfield tackle on him because it is hard, as, as uh, Stewart has proven, it's hard to bring him down with just one guy. First down and 10. Brookhaven looking definitely like a playoff team. Oh, uh, that time they didn't get anywhere. Coming in, Jordan Spivey, the defensive tackle. The senior at 6'2, 235, says, I've seen enough of Mr. Five's cutbacks. I'm going to take care of it right now. Matt Waddell, what do you have? I'll tell you guys, the defense for Beechcroft really looks like they're spending a lot of energy out there, and several of the guys playing both ways. We talk about this Brookhaven team and how many points they've put up this year, guys. There was five games last year where they scored a touchdown or less. They were shut out a few times. They uh, only scored five points in one game, and you look at this offense this year, it doesn't seem possible. It's certainly a, right. a much improved offensive side of the ball, and they're taking it out on that Beechcroft D. Little play fake. Stepping up and he's going to be sacked. Dropped at the 30 yard line. And coming in and getting the sack, Chris Noble, the senior. Once again, looks like Cougars defense is showing up. Yeah. If, if you think about it, they gave up three points on the opening drive. And besides that, we're looking at a punt return for a touchdown. Interception for a touchdown. Interception for a touchdown. Bad field position on the on the short field. Short field and the fumble on the short field. So they played short short field twice. They've maybe given up, you know, 14 legitimate points, 10 legitimate points. That's an excellent point. Yeah, they've, they're out there playing. Special teams. Oh, they're coming after him. Oh, and like you mentioned, the dew. <laughs> <laughs> starting to find its way on the grass in the second half and he planted that right foot and tried to cut and it went out from under it. Those, those are the guys that affects the most the guys that are cutting all, all the time. Watch this. He's been cutting on a dime all night and then right there just feet go out right out from underneath him and and uh, little turf monster got him. That's right. Ju judo cricket as I like <laughs> to say. Well Rodney Stewart. Remember what happened the last time they were in this formation it went over his head in the end zone. He tried to bring it out. Let's see if he can punt this thing. Not too shabby end over end kick. It's about a 16 18 yard effort and it goes out of bounds but it's still a short field for the Cougars at 114 third quarter. Yeah and once again we got we got to turn to Marvin Stewart the senior quarterback for Beechcroft. He's obviously he's 0 for 6 this half. He has a touchdown in the first half. You know, one interception, you had two, but one we're only going to count. One right. he was trying to make a play on, and and he's been in this game. He's coming in the game. He's got seven touchdowns and only two interceptions. So you know, in 62 percent, this is a good quarterback. This is a guy who's he he's played a lot of football, and, and this is his opportunity right now. It's, it hasn't gotten away from him just yet. Obviously, there's a, a a big hill to climb, but he can still rally his guys and say, "Hey, we can do something here. Let's get it going." Out of the gun. Keeper, belly give, and then uh, 82 comes in and gets him. 
So DJ Gregs. Stewart's proven that he can throw. Obviously, he's had, a, you know, obviously an interception return for a touchdown, which I know he's not happy that, about. But they may have to air it out here a little bit. They might take advantage of a couple of receivers on the outside, maybe move Cordell out to the slot and maybe give him a shot down the middle of the field. But because Marvin Stewart has pro proven that he can throw the ball, and he has a strong arm. And I like him when he's out of the pocket. When yeah. he rolls sometimes, buys him a little extra time. And he has had open receivers that have not hauled in passes. Yes. Here's Hale. And oh, I told you he was a tough youngster, and he bangs ahead. He picks up eight yards, gives his team a first down and 10 at the Bearcat 41. We'd like to see Hale back. He's a guy who uh, he's averaging, as you mentioned, 15 yards a carry coming into this football game, but he went off with an injury and in his back. So it shows you how tough these kids are. Well, we've seen some good fullbacks. Oh, yeah. Gizzy, huh? Gizzy from week. Circleville. He was good. You love saying that name. <laughs> oh, I did. I loved when he caught that pass out of the backfield late in the fourth quarter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coach was very excited about us giving him his kudos, too. With pressure, steps up, and oh, my. Another missed opportunity there on a post route. As uh, Groom was open there for a moment on the post. Yeah, pressure in the face. As everybody knows, the best pass defense is getting pressure on the quarterback. But look at this post route. Hangs in and oh man, he just missed it. Yeah, Raylan Ward was right there on the on the pressure. It looked like, you know, he's a small guy. Looks like he might have come from the corner, a little corner blitz there. So, you know, we talked about offensively that Coach Blake was bringing it all out. Defensively, they're blitzing corners right now on <laughs> 30 to 6. Second down and 10. Well, a little uh, stretch play trying to come around the corner will expire the third quarter clock. So when we come back, it'll be third down and 14. And Beechcroft needs a first down in a big way. They trail by 24. Well, high school football on CSN, the Columbus Sports Network, along with Matt Durazio, Matt Waddell, Katie Witham. I'm Eric Becker. Glad to have you with us. Both teams, 3-0. and uh, Beachcroft, 4-2. and Brookhaven, 5-1. and And Brookhaven on top by 24, 30-6. In a muggy night of football, mid-80 degrees here, and we are in October. I hope it lasts. Uh, but you know, winter's just uh, right around the corner. Well, the fourth quarter is brought to you by the National Scouting Report. And again, uh, Terry Mallory, and uh, it's going to have to be a big fourth quarter for the Cougars. They have to convert this third down here, the line to make the 32. And they do have two downs, and they'll use them, I'm sure. Julius Miller there as they attend to him on the sideline. Stewart rolling. That's what he does well. Buys him time. That pass intercepted and dropped. Oh my. It wasn't 24. <laughs> it was uh, Daryl Powell. Well, once again, it was a little rollout here, and Stewart's throwing on the run. And to me, there's two guys in one. Spot and that can never be a good good thing. You know, right. when, good when the receivers are next to each other, that means there's extra DBs and and uh, defense defensive players next to the ball, and, and that's why a lot of Stewart's passes have been either contended for interceptions or knocked away or whatever the case may be. Cameron Gunnell is back deep along with Stewart. Stewart. He's going to have a chance. No, he called for the fair catch, and now he wishes he didn't. You see his, <laughs> his head just kind of go back and go, oh, oh, my, that was premature. Yeah, that was similar to the other one. He could have caught that one on the run, as you liked. Yes, yeah, he took and, yeah. and just gone. Well, Coach Tom Blake, his fifth year. And uh, Mark Wiley, the defensive coordinators. Uh, 
coached a beauty as well. 33 game city league winning streak they had going into last year, and I think it was broken by Northland, if I'm not mistaken. Matt Waddell gives me a thumbs up and says I'm right. Heck yeah, that's a computer down there. Uh, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> you run Stewart. He broke free and picks up nine yards. They just been finding. They just been finding ways to get him the ball. And he's been doing a great job. Tosses, screens, passes, whatever. Ruth Jones, congratulations, Ruth. You are the CSN Student of the Week from Brookhaven High School, 2007 Valley Victorian. And if uh, Rodney Stewart, I'm glad that uh, we have chosen this game this week, not just because of the rivalry. It's just that there's so many athletes on the field, and it gives everybody in Central Ohio a chance to to see these guys because you know yeah you have all the big schools and you'll get a few division ones out of there but these city schools are they're loaded with talent and these two schools especially and a lot of them has come through uh, his portal oh look at that oh what can you say that's that's <laughs> and now a late flag you may have a late hit out of frustration because Rodney Stewart's just doing what he wants oh man it's a free for all down there. Uh, we know we got to give credit to the offensive line here. Sometimes you forget to do that. He has a good offensive line, and then once he breaks past that uh, first level, he gets in that second level where the running or the defensive backs are, and he's just making moves and getting open and and, uh, and getting into space and making guys miss and just getting big chunks of uh, yardage at a time. Well, you mentioned the offensive line. Hey, Matt, we never forget the offensive line. Uh, Didi Wallace. Prentice, Thickpin, and our T Max Sports hits of the game there. Didn't count. <laughs> I mean, it counted for getting the big hit of the game. Absolutely. But it uh, didn't help <laughs> uh, finishing that offensive line for Brookhaven. Uh, Galvin Bonner and Glenn Madison Jr., the right tackle. Prentice, left tackle. And Wallace left guard in the center, uh, Ruby Didi. Second down. And now an eye formation, which they normally ran 90% of their plays out of that formation. Not much tonight. Oh, there's something that they're not going to like is uh, John, John Bays had that right in the bread basket and couldn't bring it in. And that was one of the few miscues the Bearcats have had offensively. It was a well-thrown ball, no question. Step and throw, nice balance, put it right on the money. And golden rule right there. John Bays takes his eye off the ball, looks to run before he catches the ball, and you know what happens in completion. Second down again, the eye. And now you have some movement on the left tackle, left guard, center. <laughs> Everybody, hey, Matt Waddell, what do you have? Okay, you got it. What do you got for us, buddy? Well, guys, I can tell you down here on the sideline as we're seeing a little bit of a de dejected beach crop offside, and as we're looking at a, a schedule that doesn't set up too well as far as that goes, we look at Brookhaven. I think in that Northland game you were talking about, it broke their long winning streak last year, and that was a 5 nothing ball game. Must have been a two-run homer and a three-run homer, guys, that last year, but 5 uh, <laughs> nothing was the final that Brookhaven lost, and uh, we'll send it over to the far sidelines where Katie is on the Brookhaven sideline. Thanks, Matty. Do you have an injury update on Brookhaven's number nine, Julius Miller? He has a left shoulder injury they do not think it's dislocated but he does have his shoulder pads off and ice on I don't think we're going to be seeing him the rest of the game well thank you both of you uh, Demetrius Johnson there on a little counter play as he was lined up in the fullback position and just uh, gains a couple and take a look see a little wasn't really a counter as much as it was a little fake a you know, stretch with the quarterback and you know on the handoff but anyway, not a not a lot of yards there. Only a couple bring up possession down third down, and let's call it 13. And the line to make is the 21. Taking a seven-step drop, 
And that far side is hauled in with a flag down. That's Kevin Braswell, the tight end, on his first reception tonight. But there is a flag down on the play as he's able to haul that one in. Well, at least I thought I saw one. Maybe there's not. I do apologize. I... Now we saw something yellow flying over there and wasn't so I do apologize for that. That's a completed pass to Braswell on his first reception tonight. First down and 10 now at the Cougar 17 or 16. Again go with the fullback as they were playing like they wanted to go to the eye back and uh, off left side for about three or four. And again, running that is Demetrius Johnson, number three. Eric, as his clock ticks away a little bit, you look at that scoreboard, you wonder maybe this is going to be the last uh, last drive for a few of these starters, uh, particularly Rodney Stewart, who, you know, Katie and Matt have been talking about injuries, cramps, and those types of things all night. And you wonder you got a guy like that. You don't want to, you don't need him, maybe not need him this late, this late in the game with this kind of lead. Wonder if we'll see Philip Johnson, the sophomore, on their next series. Here comes Stewart. Again. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Eric, he might have gone untouched on that one. I think he did. <laughs> the left side is Prentice. The left side is Wallace. The center is Dee Dee. And I think you're right, Matt. I don't think anybody laid a finger on it. As you mentioned, you mentioned a couple offensive linemen there, and they are creating huge holes. And, yeah. and then just the natural ability of Rod Rodney Stewart just getting through there. And you see the cheers, they're excited. That's his fourth touchdown tonight, so he followed up a seven touchdown game last week with four, uh, four tonight. Seven up extra point brought to you by Walmart. And it's up and through. So Mara, who is a uh, midfielder on the soccer team for Brookhaven, comes up with another point. Watch this. Man. He did get touched. He was already in the end zone, though. The wide receivers are blocking downfield, hey, too. Definitely. That's a good point. That's, you know what, that, that turns 10-yard uh, runs into touchdowns. That's what you tell wide receivers. You, get, you block those DBs, and, and we're going we're gonna to break some long ones. Fourth touchdown for him tonight. So no doubt probably where this is going. Is his night over, Eric? Uh, no, I, he may have one. Is your coach Blake? You're pi you're piling on, huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm sure we'll see Andrew Harrell or Harrell in there as well uh, later on. The junior thought I'd get some playing time. And a new kicker here. Let's see who that is. That is. Uh, Prince Gubaya. Prince Gubaya. Number 60. For Gubaya. No, and you just see his reaction there after he kicked it. He went darn. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it didn't really go where he wanted it to go. Or didn't want it, or didn't go as far as he wanted it to go. So he got in the game, big he did. You know, big game Friday night. Let's see. Oh, he just he he missed that to the left of the football. Put a little left to right, you know, spin on it. That's what we call shame, basically. You know, when your club face comes over the top of the golf ball and hits on the hosel, that's bad. Well, the scoring drive, 81 yards. It only took seven plays, two minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. 13-yard touchdown run is fourth of tonight for Rodney Stewart. And now let's see if Marvin Stewart could get something going offensively for uh, Beachcroft. And he's going to run on the left side there. And he picks up eight yards. They're still fighting. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to see who comes off the pile there. And you see uh, Daryl Powell is on his back. Is he going to get some help up? Yep. And it's been a warm night. So uh, Powell able to get up. And he's okay. Second down and eight or two after the gain of eight. 
And it looked like uh, the Cougars really were going to do something. That opening drive that they uh, executed uh, looked like this was going to be one heck of a ball game. But yeah. then the mistakes on special teams and that break, those breakdowns, and then, like you said, uh, uphill struggle and just unable to really capitalize on any out opportunities. Remember the uh, the high snap in the uh, end zone. Well, here's uh, Marvin Stewart. Continuing to play hard, and he has a first down down inside of uh, Bearcat territory at the 49 48 yard line. Yeah, the miscues uh, on you know, with the interception return, the miscues on, on special teams, and uh, and it's hard to play from behind. You got Stewart right here on a little dive keep and going around the edge, getting a first down. But when you're playing from behind, you're letting the, the, the defense of Brookhaven, as we you know, we talked about how fast they were, they got a chance to fly around, they're flying around here, and uh. And that just gives them the total advantage. They can fly around. They understand that you got to take a couple of chances, and and it's been totally uh, Brookhaven defense this whole game. One after that first series. Clock running, 8-10, fourth quarter, 37 to six, our score. Beach crawl for the first down and 10. There's a big run. Wallace Hale, look out! There he goes. Mr. Hale will score. That is 47 yards. I told you, 15 yards per carry for the fullback. Those are huge numbers for a fullback per carry, 15 yards. But that was 47 big ones right there. Yeah, and that's a sophomore showing big heart right there. He went out of the game with an injury, comes back in, looks at the not even looking at the scoreboard, gets a chance to carry the ball, and turns on the corner. We've been talking about Brookins all, all night. And, and Brookins had the angle on him, and the big fullback failed to <laughs> just kind of hit the, the extra button there, as you would like to say, the X button. Took it into the end zone. Seven up, extra point is going to be a two point conversion brought to you by Walmart on this one. And it is Hale in the backfield. Or no, actually, it's uh, going to be uh, Stewart calls his own number, and he's in. So they are able to capture that 14th point. And our new score, 37 14, 752 left in the ballgame. Well, the faithful here coming out for this rivalry game. Uh, two schools only a mile and a half apart or so. Uh, both of them have uh, enjoyed many uh, successful years here. Let's take a look at the two point conversion. Once again, uh, Marvin Stewart uh, calling his own number as he took it and uh, went to the right side. And there was nobody there. Or I mean the pass rather and uh, was able to throw it in the back of the end zone complete as he was able to find um, Ron Walton. I was trying to say that but uh, anyway 37 to 14. And now ready to kick off. And he's still in there, Rodney Stewart. Got your wish, Eric. Well, I want to <laughs> see as much as one more can, time. Huh? They're not kicking to him. How about a squib? Now, well, Brookhaven has all kinds of athletes on the field, and it looks, looks like all of them can run. That's Cameron Gunnell on his horse, and Gunnell going big time down the far side, tripped up at the 22. Whoa. Did I tell you this team had speed? No question. You, you tried to avoid Stewart by not kicking it deep, and you kick it to an up back, and he takes it around the corner for a big chunk. There's not, nothing he can do. Might as well kick it out of bounds at this pace. Well, as you mentioned, how many up backs that you know on kickoff, uh, on receiving a kickoff, do things like this? You know, it's some uh, usually a full back or two, you know, a linebacker or somebody, and they just kind of plod their way forward for a few <laughs> you know they'll they will move a tackle pile <laughs> yeah but they don't really get big runs like that well he did and it's first down and ten and Stewart working the left side for a couple division three football on CSN begins October the 13th as Ohio Wesleyan takes on Denison. And then October the 20th, it's Otterbein versus Capital. And on the 27th, it's Mount Union. Oh, there's a ball game as they host Capital. 
And you need to check your local listings for game times for those outstanding Division III football games. And there's no better football in the country than the Ohio Athletic Conference in Division III. Oh, man, top notch, top notch. There's going to be some great games. Second down and four. And he broke it. Oh, there's the strength. Look at this. Oh, I'm all done. I'm done. That's I'm it? sorry. I'm You're done. a believer? I'm, I'm done. You're a believer? I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> it, took, it took his fifth touchdown for, for Eric Thacker to become a believer, but there's no No, I'm a believer. I just said <laughs> I'm done. I can't take him. I just can't take him. <laughs> He's shown every phase, hasn't he? Yes, he has. The strength, the speed, he can cut. He's got vision. He's a total package. He's got five touchdowns a night against Crosstown Rival. And we were talking about uh, Peed at Eastmore. Which one could be the better? Well, we know Peed's good. Well, Stewart's showing pretty well here <laughs> tonight. Seventh point brought to you by Walmart is up and good. So our new score, 44 to 14. And again, count the yards after contact. One, two, I mean, uh, broken tackles, three, four. He broke four of them. Ah, wow, like I said. <laughs> well, they contained him for a while, or at least, you know, as much as you can contain this guy. Now the defense is just kind of kind of worn out after a long day at the office and uh, and rightfully so trying to trying to tackle that guy, Rodney Stewart, all day. He's going to be an electric running back for somebody. Hey, Matt Waddell, what do you have? Guys, right now we can tell you down here it's a very dejected sideline again for Beechcroft. One of those deals where they get a big play from Hale and then one right away after that they come right back the other way. But you're exactly right. I mean, he runs through the defense at 174 pounds like nobody's business breaking tackles. Uh, every bit as impressive as Pete from Eastmore. And if Brookhaven uh, keeps going here, fellas, over the next few weeks, gets a win at Northland, gets that 9-1 and one record with only a loss to Davidson, they're going to be in great shape for those D1 playoffs. Yeah, there's no doubt. And no doubt of that. And I know a lot of attention on the D uh, Division I schools, you know, like X and others. Uh, this team can play. This team can play over the shoulder. And hauling that one in is number seven. That's uh, Joe Simpson again. And he'll be uh, knocked down at the 13 or 14 yard line. So getting his leg a little bit of a workout is Kaboya. Prince Kaboya, 5'7, 160 pounder. He's only a freshman. Well, he's a senior. <laughs> he's a good one, right? <laughs> and he's a darn good senior. Well, hello to you too, number five. You know, Brookhaven might get a shot at Davidson again, <laughs> and he's uh, in the come around playoff time. This is the region right around in Central Ohio. That's a tough one. Darby, Davidson, Kaufman, right. Arlington. Yeah, Arlington. There's good. a couple big, uh, big schools, with, but there's no question that Brookhaven can play with all of them. That's true. And then you know, they've yeah. shown it tonight, and especially with a guy like Rodney Stewart, that he's got to be a nightmare for a defensive coordinator to try to contain that guy. So let's see if they can't uh, move this uh, move the ball down the field here and uh, maybe try to get another score. Well, turning the corner is uh, Wallace Hale. Oh, I like number 44. He even gets up after uh, somebody tries to sit on him there on his own sideline. Gets up. He's a tough one with some wheels, too. Yeah, Eric, we know you love fullbacks, and Hale yes, is I do. A, he's one of the better ones we've seen this year at fullback. Boom, yeah. I like it. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Keep it running. You don't have to go down. And He's had, he's had a couple big gainers here for the Cougars in the second half. Watch this. Oh, he, he like a linebacker. <laughs> he actually leaned into him on the run like he was a linebacker making it in. Yeah, he got some strength there yes, in Hale. Does. First down and 10. And motion with Walton. Play fake. Stewart. Is Walton on the outside, hauls that one in, and he does secure it for a couple. Hey, let's go down to Katie with them who has something. Katie? Thank you. Just a roster update for you. Rodney Stewart, number five, out of the game for tonight. Had a pretty good game. Five touchdowns and 156 yards. A good game for him. Number 43, John Bays, is in the game for him. Thank you, Katie. John Bays is also a receiver, so they'll move 43 into the I-back uh, 
position when they go back on offense. So uh, I thought we might see a, a couple of others like uh, Andrew Harrell or Harrell rather. Second down, six. And we told you with the jersey change that uh, Shane uh, Mathurin, the senior, and he's out close to a first down. In fact, he may have it. Well, Rodney Stewart's done for the night. He's on the shelf, and there's John Bays is going to be filling in for him. Senior wide receiver, as you mentioned, is going to move, move into the running back position, but there's no question Rodney Stewart has earned yeah. Earned a break. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> His turbo uh, button has <laughs> got to be worn out. Yeah, absolutely. I told you, there's talent in City League. I know you get a lot of attention to the suburban schools and all, but the City League has talent. Folks, take notice and come out and enjoy a ball game that these youngsters uh, play each and every Friday night. They deserve your attention. And that uh, run uh, maybe squeaked out a yard there for uh, Mathurin. Clock running inside of five minutes at 445 left in the ball game. 44 to 14 in a ball game that in the first corner at least uh, we thought we were going to have a tight one. Beechcroft uh, when they first had the uh, possession after Brookhaven took their opening possession scored a field goal. The Cougars just went boop, 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 right down the field and scored. Yep. Missed the PAT, and then it was all Brookhaven after that till late when the Cougars were able to uh, get a big run by uh, Wallace Hale and a good two point conversion in the back of the end zone uh, from Stewart to Ron Walton. And that's where we stand 44 14. And it's going to be a third down and nine after that scrimmage. And it's going to one of the line that makes the 49. You know, Eric, one of the, the stats that Matt Waddell brought up is. The fact that Beechcroft is 0 and 2 at home this year. That's not a stat you yeah, normally see. For, you know, 4 and 0 on the road, and they're going to move to 0 and 3 here at home. And, and usually that's usually an advantage, especially they have a nice crowd out here tonight. They've been they've been excited for their for their Cougars, but they have not shown up as, as far as a total team effort. Pressure sacks. Yeah, he still gets uh, credit for the sack. Talking about Christopher Thigpen, the defensive end. You know what other team doesn't play well at home has been playing uh, well uh, on the road? That's the University of Georgia. <laughs> CSN's player of the game. How about it? No doubt. Rodney Stewart. Absolutely. We'll hopefully see you in the playoffs. Congratulations to him, CSN player of the week. Well, they really delayed a long time <laughs> with that punt. He held it there for a while, and it does go uh, out of bounds at the 44-yard uh, line. Going back to that uh, University of Georgia, the Bulldogs, uh -huh. they lose South Carolina at home, but then they go on the road. They beat Alabama. They beat Auburn. Uh, go figure. Anyway. That's your squad, isn't it? Uh, in the South. Okay. Only in the South. Oh, it's Buckeyes, baby. All oh, right. it's Buckeyes all, all the way. And everybody in South Carolina knew it, and oh boy, did I go through the ringer with those Outback uh, bowls. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> and I just, you know, I just kept uh, hearing about it. And so anyway, I was like, well, then uh, we turn around and win a national championship. There you go. And uh, so I had to scurry back from a basketball game that I was calling to catch the second half of that. <laughs> but the uh, producer was telling me in the ear what the score was. <laughs> First down and 10. And there's a good, oh, he took the football away. That's a fumble, and that is Beechcroft possession. Coming up with the uh, football, I do believe, was that Deion King? Yes, it was, the defensive end, number 17. And he just take it right from him. Oh, oh no, he lost it. You know, he had his opportunity there. And that one was uh, number 41. That was uh, for Jeffrey, Jeffrey Williams. Yeah, and that was Jeffrey Williams at running back. Philip Johnson was the new quarterback and the guy you had mentioned, and that was just two new guys on, on their first play in and on a big right. night under the lights, and just kind of back to the fundamentals. They messed up there and, and turned it over. Something I know, I know Coach Blake is not going to be happy about. He expects fundamentals and execution from top to bottom. Well, 
Congratulations, CSN's player of the game, Wallace Hale. Eight rushes, 75 uh, yards, and one TD. And, uh, he's performed well <laughs> and shown some wheels as well. Yeah, throw throw about 10 tackles on top on defense, <laughs> yeah. and he's been flying around. So congratulations to sophomore. Yeah, sophomore. Did you hear me? I said sophomore. Oh, something to build on. <laughs> something to build on. Now uh, one of the uh, Cougars shaking up here a little bit. And let's hope that it's just a cramp or so. And they're going to get him up here. I think that's, uh, is that Leon Williams? Yep, number 71. Leon Williams, the senior, he's going off under his own power, and that's good to see there. 2.49 left in the ball game, week number seven. And uh, Brookhaven's going to improve to 4 0 in the Columbus North Division. Beechcroft is going to fall uh, to 3 and 1 in the division and 4 and 3 overall. And I do like this Bearcat team come playoff time, which is just a matter of weeks away. And just this reminder that CSN will uh, ride along with any of our uh, playoff teams that will be in action here in Columbus and Central Ohio. So uh, stay tuned as the football season uh, will hopefully continue for a few teams here on CSN. And remember the uh, the brackets and everything will be uh, brought after the last Friday in October and will begin in November. Stewart steps up, lets it fly in the end zone, and it's going to be intercepted. No incomplete at the two or three yard line. And giving chase Cameron Gunnell his corner position as he was looking for Ron Walton there on the far side. Yeah, just try to throw one up there to Ron Walton. Not a bad shot considering the circumstances, but once again, kind of Ron Walton kind of lost it and overshot him just a little bit. Uh, he has a strong arm. Oh, no question. You're the receiver on this one. Yeah, little post corner move and just missed him. The corners have played well oh, yeah. tonight. I mean, Gunnell and uh, of course, uh, Brookins is, you know, they have played well. Going big again. And it's just a uh, high jump time now. It's just to you know, throw it down the field and just hope. Yeah, and those, those are tough to complete. Obviously, you get it every uh, every couple of those. But these, like as you mentioned, these uh, these Bearcat secondary, these DBs, these are they're, these good. Are, they're good. They are good. Yes. Not only can they cover the pass, but more more impressively, they they come up and fill on that run, and they've got some. They come up with uh, with some authority and some bad intentions too. <laughs> it's a, a defense that's uh, just uh, outstanding. I mean. They, they, Give them all the accolades you want. Now well, that's the number there. That's surprising. And again, I intercepted after the tip. And deservingly so that Gunnell's going to get one. And they got to tackle him. Gunnell's gone. It's see you later. Gunnell outruns the angle. No, he didn't. They're going to let him know about that because <laughs> Chauncey Hilson is able to grab him from the backside. So there you're going to tease him that, uh, hey, how did you let the center uh, that plays both ways for Beechcroft, Chauncey Hilson, run you down? Yeah, he must not have seen that because it looked like, as you mentioned, he was gone and uh, just got ran down there. Well, you know what? He could have been out of breath, too. I mean, you make the athletic play. That's going to take some oxygen out of you when you go up. And, well, I actually got it off the deflection. But this is a long run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he picked that off at the 10. So, you know, some cutback moves. Now, watch this. I think right here he's thinking, well, you're thinking I'm gone. Yeah, I thought he outran the, ang outran <laughs> the angle. Give kudos to Hilson. Has some pretty good speed there as well. <laughs> There's no question that once and once again, Brookhaven, another big play. You, can, you know, there's been four, five, six of them, and, uh, and and the big plays are just they're coming, and, and that's what is the difference in this kind of game. Who can make the big plays and who who doesn't make them? And tonight it's been all Brookhaven big plays all night. All right, timeout on the field as 2:18 remaining. 44 to 14 our score and he's still winded 
And getting a stretch too. Getting a stretch, getting some water. Yeah, he's stretching that leg. He's saying, "Oh, the reason that he, the <laughs> reason, heckled too? <laughs> the reason that Chauncey Hilson caught me was because I cramped up on my calf." Let's take a look at our play of the game, and presented by Shawnee State University. And this was a play I really liked. Rodney Stewart on the fly, hauls it in and says, "See you later." And it's have a nice trip, Rodney. Yeah, 24 to six at the time, and then he just. Breaks the back of the Cougars right there, dives in the end zone, and had only had five of them tonight. I don't know how he got player of the game. I mean, my goodness, only had five touchdowns. Yeah, that's 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 not <laughs> enough. That's just that's not enough. <laughs> well, Coach Tom Blake, your team looks pretty good. League titles in 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. You remember at the 2004 team. Uh, won the uh, state uh, championship that 2005 team had to go up against Cle uh, Cleveland Glenville to open the year and a lot of people was interested in that game because of uh, coach Gins and all the talent that he had there at Glenville and uh, they really handled Brookhaven and I thought that Glenville team was going to be the team in 06 or 05 rather that uh, was going to roll but it was St. X who eventually uh, one and then that uh, put Hilliard uh, Davidson on the map because in the semis is when X played Davidson in a squeaker and had to win late. Well, then uh, then Davidson comes back the next year and wins the state championship. So uh, a lot of people giving credit to Davidson and well they should about bringing a, uh, a division state title back to uh, Columbus. But give credit to Brookhaven. They did it first. In 04, even though it was Division Two, so yeah, absolutely. And now Darby picking up where Davidson left off. Upper Arlington only with one loss. As you take a look at our new quarterback, and there he is. There's the youngster. That's Philip Johnson, the sophomore. Uh, so you know, you you hear about the Cleveland teams, you hear about the Cincinnati teams, you hear about the MAC conference as the big gush of water just uh, or the Gatorade was thrown on Tom Blake there on the far sideline. Central Ohio now. Uh, really showing well on the gridiron and the new running back is in for a touchdown and that is number 41 that's Jeffrey Williams the sophomore at 5 7 141 so he's in and now the uh, scoreboard definitely tilted uh, for the Bearcats of Brookhaven Yeah, nice to see Williams get in there sophomore get a touchdown and I think even the even happier is Tom Blake uh, before his, uh, his young offense came out and he had a turnover and right here they come out they put together a, a nice drive on the short field but the key was they went out there and executed and they got a touchdown and I know Tom Blake the coach he is and the program he's put together he expects everybody to go out there and, and to execute not to let up at all. Well Murrah up for the seven up extra point brought to you by Walmart and again on the money he's only missed one and that was after the penalty when they moved him back. Remember? I remember. Yeah, so he's uh, he's done well tonight. 51 to 14. Uh, uh, this isn't what we expected. No, is it? it didn't. No, I thought it was going to be tighter. Last year, 28 to 20. Uh, going back, uh, as you take another look at the uh, touchdown there, um, going back to, uh, let's see, the uh, 94, I mean, the 04 team when Beechcroft lost. That game 16 to 2, but in fact it was 9 to 2, right? And uh, Brookhaven was on top. Uh, both teams undefeated. And the reason it ended up 16 to 2 is that uh, Beechcroft was forced to throw a pass in the end zone to try to get something going uh -huh. very late in the ball game, and it was returned for a touchdown, hence the 16 to 2 score. That Beechcroft team, and this is a quote from Tom Dunlap. Okay. That team was the very best. Beechcroft team I've ever coached and they didn't have a chance to go to the playoffs and boy you can hear the grumblings of that still I'm looking in the press box they're all <laughs> shaking their head going yeah I remember that so uh, but anyway he's been here quite a long time as we told you uh, uh, coach Tucson Boyd Miller Maddox all under uh, you know his tenure here found uh, head coaching jobs throughout the city and as we said a lot of the, the players have made their way through here and just an outstanding guy who runs a very good program and uh, you know just uh, didn't have the horses tonight you know, just a couple of bad breaks in the first half 
really. And the uh, special team breakdowns and the, the turnovers. But they're fighting hard, as you see. You know, Joe Simpson, who's had a few plays here tonight, um, brings it out across the 40. Well, you know, all of your favorite sports action around Central Ohio is here on CSN, and you can relive all of your favorite broadcasts on the Columbus Sports Network. They're all available on DVD from high school to the professional ranks. Give us a call at 575-9000 for more information and how you can relive moments on CSN. Now I'm going to time for a couple of uh, plays here. A couple of new players coming in now for Beechcroft. Week number seven, 85 degrees. Who would have thought that? Man. Another huge surprise. But we better enjoy it while we can because you know that wind is going to be howling. And the temperature is going to be around 30 degrees or so uh, eventually. Well, there he goes. And talking about uh, Joe Simpson as he takes that uh, snap and turns the corner and picks up about 18 plus yards. It's nice to see him get in, yes. maybe play a little quarterback in a position that he, he didn't play th uh, throughout the game, but, um, you know, a chance for him to get a couple snaps here at the end of the game, and it looks like he's still still running hard, and he's still playing hard. Yep, out of the gun. And a good little move right there as he ducks under, and then outruns that containment. And first down and 10, clock running 31 seconds. And he's going to call his own number. It almost slips, but's able to hold on. And then he's belted. How about number 73? That is uh, Jamal Massey, the junior at 6'4", 244, able to lay some wood on him. And not only offensive side, but defensive side, some, some guys getting a chance to play as well. Also, uh, yeah, number 73, as we told you, the junior. Watch this. Boom. Now, oh, took his helmet off, too. When there you go. Down. Finishing strong there for the Bearcats. Well, that'll do it. Uh, the game is over. And it was uh, just an outstanding performance on both sides of the ball. And, yes, Coach, you were right about your special teams. Man, they played beautifully. I mean, they just outstanding. Only one missed opportunity, if you want to call that, on uh, one of the PATs. But, uh, Coach Tom Blake, you've got a good one and a very fast team, and they have number five as well. Well, Brookhaven on top, 51 to 14. Well, welcome back, everybody. Your final score, 51 to 14, complete dominance uh, by Brookhaven. Uh, it was a ball game, uh, Matt D'Arazio, that saw that the uh, Beechcroft, uh, they played well in the first quarter. We thought we were in for a ball game. But then the wheels just kind of came off with the pick six and then the uh, issues with the special teams. Yeah, the, the better team won tonight, and Brookhaven did it in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. They scored just about every way you could score, and, and uh, credit to uh, Coach Blake and his team. Well, Coach Blake is standing by with CSO's Katie Witham. Katie? Thanks, guys. Coach, first off, congratulations. You know, you Thank said you. to me prior to the game, if your special teams did well, then the team would do well. I think they did it tonight. All special teams, I think we won that battle tonight. You know, both both offensive and defense have played hard. It was a hard-fought game, and I know we have kids banged up. Uh, our offense really got going tonight, but the special teams, you know, when Rodney Stewart came out and returned that punt early in that third quarter, I think that really iced it and broke their back. And, and then Ibrahim Marat, our uh, kicker, did a fantastic job of, on the kickoffs and pinning them deep, and our kids did a good job on coverage. So uh, I think we won that battle, and, and maybe that's the difference in the ball game. Yeah, you have to be happy with your number five, Rodney Stewart. Five touchdowns tonight, 156 yards. Uh, Rodney, Rodney's just gotten better and better. He ran hard tonight. That last touchdown run. I mean, he 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 wanted to get it in there. That was just sheer will willpower. But he's a tremendous athlete, and uh, you know he he makes us look like good coaches. <laughs> Yeah, fifth consecutive win so far, three games till the playoffs. What's your mindset heading into this final stretch? Well, we told the kids, you know, enjoy this game uh, over the weekend. Then we come back Monday. We I know we're banged up. We have East High School, and then we have two teams at the end of our schedule, Northland and Mifflin, who both beat us last year, so it becomes payback week. But we can't think about playoffs if we don't win the next three, and we can't think about uh, game nine and ten until you, until you win uh, against East High School next week. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys, back to you. 
Uh, thank you very much, Katie, and happy birthday to you, dear. Matt Waddell joins us now. Let's take a look at those Applebee's uh, stats. Well, absolutely, guys. It was cer certainly a big dominating performance by Brookhaven, and as we do look at the, at the overall stats right now, uh, you don't see much difference in the first downs, but boy, the rushing yards, uh, certainly a big thing right there, and as you see, pretty decent total yards uh, for Beechcroft as well, but Brookhaven came up with those key uh, turnovers, and that was the big deal right there. I say the key game, a key play, along with that punt return, had to be that interception because uh, that just took any steam out of their offense. No question about it. When Beechcroft was able to get that lead, uh, they gave it up right away with the pick six the other way, and, and from then on, it was all Brookhaven. Well, for the whole crew, I'm Eric Thacker saying thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful night, and we'll see you week eight here on CSN. Good night, everybody. This has been a presentation of CSN, the Columbus Sports Network.